possible with a long war against Hamas. The comments came before Israel agreed to return to peace talks in Cairo, but stand in stark contrast to comments from other cabinet ministers who overwhelmingly were more hawkish and are pushing for a full military conquest of the Strip and the full destruction of Hamas. An actual peace deal will be extremely unpopular among Israel's ruling coalition on any terms, and Netanyahu's current policy seems to be keeping the conflict going at a level that keeps his cabinet happy without escalating to such an extent that it alienates the U.S. and other Western nations counseling caution. This makes the ceasefire and peace negotiations that go along with them extremely difficult, as Israel has so far refused to concede a single point on ending the blockade of the Strip, meaning the talks keep stalling without resolution. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the video sensation that's taking the internet by storm. A web series on YouTube passed the 100 views mark this week. Titled Andrew and John, the wildly popular webisodes feature roommates Andrew Vanier and John Haney playing fictionalized versions of themselves in unusual situations, mostly set in and around their Chicago apartment. Dude, did you get my tart? What's a tart? Oh, you just texted me a fart. Their latest short titled Laundry Day reached the unprecedented 100 view milestone this week after a heavy promotional push in which the duo posted the skits to their Facebook pages. The hit video features the roommates wearing unconventional outfits while scrounging up enough change to do laundry in their basement. Other popular episodes include Foreign Landlord featuring John's friend Brett from work and a video where Andrew suspects John might be a zombie. Our videos consistently get over 50 views now, but Laundry Day, that's the first mm -hmm. one that's really taken off. Yeah, everyone I know has seen it. It's completely viral. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want by dialing in toll-free here to 855-453. That's toll-free 1-855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You can also join us here on the phones and also via Skype. We've got Skype at username lrn.fm. So do send a contact request first. We do have to approve you, and then it'll be easy for you to get in touch with us via Skype from that point forward. All kinds of stuff, of course, to talk about tonight, including some updates on Detroit. Uh, it's just been fascinating, of course, to watch as Detroit has been this example of the city that has been a major failure in, in so many different ways. Probably one of the most obvious examples of government failure, overreach, continued failure, more overreach, and just continuing to spiral down the drain. And it's just been amazing to uh, to watch it. I feel terrible for the people that live there or that still live there because there have been hundreds of thousands of individuals who have moved out over the last few decades uh, in Detroit. So but to some extent, I mean, those people have moved out because of sort of jobs and the, the yeah, Rust Belt phenomenon. Town. Yeah, the Rust Belt phenomenon. Now, I do agree with you that Detroit could have turned this around by being, uh, you know, less, uh, having uh, fewer taxes and being less onerous and, and those kind of things. It's just that oh. cities don't really understand that. Well, Detroit does have a plan to turn this around, and I'll reveal that plan for you here in a little bit. But first, let's talk about uh, some of the other news out of Detroit about how just absolutely dismal of a shape uh, the city is in. And to some extent, this is good news, actually, for the people that remain in Detroit. And that is that um, about half of their parking meters don't work. According to TheVerge.com, sometimes you need to spend money to make money, but that's easier said than done when there isn't much money to spend in the first place. Detroit, which last year became the largest American city to declare bankruptcy, is missing out on potentially millions in revenue because just about half of its 3,404 parking meters are out of service. Now, that's interesting because uh, here in Keene, New Hampshire, we've got like 700 metered spaces. So you'd think Detroit, 3,500, 3,400, that's not that much more than uh, yeah. <laughs> 1,000 or whatever. Uh, anyway, there are, half of them are out of service, according to city officials. It's estimated the city could get an extra $6 million in revenue just by getting the rest of the meters in working condition. Wow, how much are those tickets? They're collecting Ooh. millions? 
Yeah, I bet you the tickets. You know what? Actually, we've seen that they the must be in the hundreds or no, thousands. I no, mean, uh-uh. how could you collect millions of dollars from just a, a couple hundred meters? Actually, well, there's 3,400 of them, but uh, the tickets are fairly uh, high compared to our very own Keene, New Hampshire. But I believe we've looked at the numbers before, and I think Detroit actually ranks on the lower side oh, okay. of major cities as far as you know, Boston, New York, Philly, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, their Which parking are still fines. High. Right, their parking fines at the very least, the amount that the initial fine amount that you get when you first get the ticket, as I recall, is lower than other cities. But I don't know what the per hour or per minute or whatever fees are there. So those are also going to be higher than what you pay here in uh, in Keene, New Hampshire. As Interesting. Well. Uh, so fortunately, it shouldn't be too difficult to fix the broken uh, broken meters, according to The Verge. The Detroit News reports that most of the meter issues come from small cutbacks in maintenance costs that are ultimately counterproductive. As part of efforts to reduce city spending, the Duracell batteries that power the meters were swapped out with off-brand units. The cheaper <laughs> batteries apparently can't hold a charge as long as the Duracells. Well, duh. Which maintenance workers used to swap out twice per year, once in the summer and once in the winter. Of course, maintenance crews still replace the batteries on the same schedule, even though the new batteries can't hold up. So meters stop working and the city stops getting paid. To make matters worse, the old locks used to secure the batteries easily seize up from water or grime, leaving even more meters out of service. And according to the Detroit News, the city delayed upgrading the locks to new brass cylinders as its budget tightened and now it's paying the price. Now, of course, had the city's parking scheme been a truly profitable venture, then they should have easily have had the money in reserve to do whatever repairs were necessary. But I, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that, at least based on my experience in our little Keen, it's probably the case that Detroit's running in the red in their parking department, that it's probably being subsidized. Like, for all the money that they're taking in, it's likely not putting them in the black and I thought so, they were going to sell their parking uh, enforcement. I thought that that was one of the things that they were going to sell off. Mm, um, I know I think they were trying to sell the art gallery and the artwork they, in the They were, but I'm pretty gallery. sure I heard about them getting rid of their uh, parking too. But this mm. is something that cities will do is because for whatever reason cities simply can't take a monopoly on parking spaces in their and make it in a particular area and then make it profitable. And it's be- it's all because of the mentality. It's the mentality of of, of you know city workers employing city workers here in Keene, New Hampshire, they could uh, what they they lose tens of thousands of dollars per year on their parking. They could fire one of or you know reassign one of the meter uh, maids to some other job, and then immediately they'd be in the black. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, it's well, not one about- of them's already quit. In Keene. Yeah, one of them, but uh, that was the meter butler. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So they still have two, but if they had one, then you would still have the threat of getting a parking uh, ticket when you went over time, Mm -hmm. and you would that person would generate as many, if not more, tickets than they um, generated in the past, and everything would be fine. But they can't think like a business. Well, it seems to me there's no incentive for them to do that because they can just always take the money that they need. There's some incentive, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. Because they'll just, you know, like you said, they'll take the money they need, and so therefore they can just do whatever they want. Okay, so here's a little bit more information about this uh, from Detroit News. The Verge was kind of summarizing what the Detroit News was reporting on this. $45 are actually now what the parking tickets are, and apparently they've gone up uh, within the last year or two. Tickets for parking at an expired meter were recently boosted by 50% from the long-standing $30 level which the Detroit News calls a sensible move since the <laughs> cost of issuing and processing a $30 ticket had reached $32. And that was actually the last time we talked about this was when the news about the Detroit Parking Department was they're spending more, $2 more per ticket than they actually bring in in revenue from the written ticket. <laughs> Wouldn't they just be better off at this point to get rid of the entire parking department? They don't think that way. And the... The government, uh, de- you know, departments that they, they p- are perpetual. I mean, they just keep existing. It's, it's about it's, ego. It's not about money. They, they would employees. have to admit that they're useless. Yeah, but they're not going to even get pensions. I mean, at this point, why wouldn't they? 
Well, the, the, their employees were getting uh, shafted on pensions last time we talked. The uh, parking uh, employees were? Okay. Some employees. Oh, you mean the city employees. Yeah, there's well, the possibility, the looming possibility of that. I don't know what's going on. I know there was a lawsuit involved with that one, Mark, and you know they may end up forcing the state to pay out for that. I don't know where that one sits. I'd be interested in hearing if there's been an update on that. But yeah, it's a, it's a possibility that, that if you're a city worker in Detroit, that the, the whole pension thing may not be a guarantee for you. Which I think that, you know, we need to see that happen in more places where basically uh, these ridiculous pensions that in a lot of cases can be 90% of what it was that individual made per year as a government bureaucrat. They get to collect 90% of that amount uh, just for sitting on their butt in retirement. That, a, lot of that's crazy. a lot of municipalities have gone, have gone to the 401k model. Just like most businesses have. What about in New Hampshire? Is that happening here? It's happening, but uh, not happening fast enough. All right. So you can share your thoughts here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. More about the Detroit parking debacle. But first, let's go to John in Seattle. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, John. Hey, uh, guys. I hope you'll keep me long enough to explain this thing because I keep hearing stuff on your radio about Washington's marijuana laws. And I'd like to get it straight because I know quite a bit about them. Great, go for it. Okay, let's start. Let's start with the recreational. Okay, so they're recreational. You can possess an ounce, and uh, basically it's probably $15 a gram. Not many stores open because the supplies haven't caught up to the demand, okay? So it's legal to, at this point in Washington State, to open a store. That is now legal? Yeah, that's right. They're open already. The 17 stores open. Got it. But the supplies... Uh, haven't caught up to the demand, a lot maybe due to powdery mildew. If you've ever grown it, you'll know that there's a thing called powdery mildew, and it does affect quite a bit of growers. Wow. Anybody looking on YouTube can learn a lot about growing. Uh, John, period. hold that thought. We're going to get you back here in a moment to continue giving us more on the uh, from the inside of Washington State about legalization. You start looking on YouTube for that kind of stuff, you should be using ProXPN. Toll-free number, what, for researching uh, marijuana grows. how to grow marijuana? Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. The Supreme Court has ruled over and over again that government has no obligation to provide any services, even services as remedial as protection. They don't have any obligation to provide those services. So therefore, if there is no obligation on their part to provide any services, why should there be an obligation on our part to pay them? Well, there isn't. It's only an obligation of they, you know implement this thing and then you're afraid because they have guns people are scared it's never going to end until we get over that fear 
Absolutely. I mean, we're essentially being terrorized by a group of gangsters calling themselves the U.S. federal government. The only difference between the federal government and, a, you know, a thug on the street is the size of the gang. It's time people start treating the IRS like the thugs they are. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything here toll free at 855-450 free if you live in Detroit. And you want to comment on the decrepit and continually failing situation that exists there and all of the interesting details that sort of come out of that. Like, they're so bad off, they can't even fix the parking meters that are broken, which is great news for the people who are parking in Detroit because about half of the meters are apparently not functioning correctly at all. Uh, Many of the batteries are dead and haven't been replaced and so that means that there's a good about maybe about 40 something percent chance that if you pull up to a meter in Detroit, it's not going to be working at all, which means free parking. <laughs> well, I don't know if it necessarily means that this I mean, could revitalize, help revitalize the city. I think I it could if they're not issuing tickets. But the fact is, is that if they issue a ticket with a broken meter, the that's only real bad when they yeah, if they do that. Yeah. yeah. But if they do it, they just do it. What are you going to do about it? Take it to court. Take it to court yeah. and fight it in court. And uh, They're because, not supposed to do that, right? Like, that's not something that they supposedly well, we do didn't here. know it was broken. Hmm. Well, they're supposed to look at it and determine whether or not it was broken. But, yes, it's certainly not It's certainly not unheard of for police to lie in court. And, Mark, what you're suggesting would be that the meter maid would tell a lie. Because in order for the I'm not maid, even suggesting that. In order for the maid to write the ticket, they have to observe the device. And I mean, in theory, at least. They have to see that the device has expired. And they it would have to testify job. to that in it's court. It's their job to generate revenue. Like, specifically, that's what their job is, is to generate revenue. So... I wouldn't be surprised if they're trying to generate some revenue. Yeah, but Mark, it's not as, uh, like he said, she said, as it used to be. People all walk around with video cameras. They can take their own evidence and show that the parking meter was, in fact, expired when they had the ticket on their dash. Or it says fail a lot of times if the thing is broken or whatever. In some cases, it won't say anything if the battery is completely dead. We'll get back into the story here. Uh, Your thoughts certainly welcome. You can also hook up with a free Bitcoin wallet. Go to blockchain.com. You can get yours there. It's totally free. Android. Android users, iPhone users, there's an easy wallet for you to install. Just go to blockchain.com and get started with that. John's in Seattle calling with some corrections uh, to some perhaps some misinformation that we had given out uh, or some misunderstandings that we had about the Washington situation. I wasn't sure with legalization. Yeah, you, just don't, you just don't know the full extent of what's going on here. Yeah, well, that was one of my okay, big so questions. Let me explain to you what, what's really going on yeah. here. Okay, it's the medical marijuana, unlike Colorado, they're not mixed together, they're separate. And the legislature already tried to stop what's going on, but let me explain to you how it's going. In Washington State, with a $100 bill, you can get a medical card. Mm -hmm. With that $100 medical card, you can now share that. So, Ian, I'm the sick guy, I'm sharing it with you, okay? Now, we can each grow seven and a half plants, or one grow eight, one grow seven, okay? Now, if I got three cards, because I know three six people, we can now grow 45 plants, Mm -hmm. okay? If you know what you're doing and you scrog a plant correctly, you can get a pound off of one plant in a room that's basically four by four. You have to be a pretty big plant. 
Hey, take a look on YouTube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you stuff over and over. Get some education. Okay. Now, the deal is that these people are selling medical marijuana between 5 and $15 a gram. Okay. If you look on Craigslist for Seattle, Tacoma, you will see what I'm talking about is correct. Okay. So these people now who grow just even 15 plants, okay, and you get them the right size, and you know what you're doing. I don't know how much pot you grow, but I know a lot about growing it. So here's the thing. These people legally under the law can sell their marijuana right on Craigslist. Look, it's for sale right there under medical marijuana, and they're clones, okay? Mm-hmm. So you'll pay between 5 and $15 a clone. Mm-hmm. The legislature tried to stop that. But nobody really wants to stop this because this is better than both worlds. So roughly for a $50 license now a year, you now have the legal right to possess 26 ounces of peace, not one ounce as the recreational people. Mm-hmm. Okay, They're taking a whip to them. The, the medical people, who anybody can get it, can now hold 26, and if he goes for three people, that's three times 26. Have you also observed in Washington what was observed in Colorado earlier this year, and that is that the medical uh, cannabis is selling, even though it's the same pot, selling for less than the recreational? That's correct. The street value right now of one ounce by itself in the medical world, and you may look on Craigslist and see high prices, but you'll see low prices, but the real street value is 140 an ounce for top shelf, OG Kush. AK-47, Blue Dream. Mm, that's they half the price right. of what you might pay on that's the black market. Correct. That's why we Washingtonians aren't out there screaming right and left, change the law, because the medicals got them by the short hairs. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, what does a recreational so now, ounce cost? A, a recreational ounce is about one, well, no, because you're going to buy it on it's a store. It's $15 a gram. I don't even know they sell ounces. So really? Look, that it's going to be 300 but... Believe me, the under the underground market is 200 and falling. 200 okay. something, okay. Yeah, okay, and, and and a lot of that even goes all the way down to the 150. But the pound mm. price is roughly 100 an ounce. So you buy one pound, 16 ounces. Damn, $1, that's $1, awesome. And that is that is falling too. And the reason why a lot of this, especially as we come into fall, okay, there's going to be a massive crop coming in. And so all through Thanksgiving and Christmas. Things will be way cheaper. See, yeah, you're right in about Washington, that. Washington, we don't want to blow like Colorado did and let the state have the whole thing. We've got it made here. Just think of yourself not having much money. And believe me, I know people who are severely disabled who are growing. And now, because you can legally sell under our law, right on Craigslist, you can deliver right to a cop if he's got a medical marijuana card. <laughs> oh, man, that would make a great Kodak that. moment. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is, that's what I don't think. When people think of it, they say, well, what's Washington doing? They don't realize the underlying thing that's going on in Washington. We are a free state in the sense. I mean, I came here oh. from another place that is anything but free. And now we are free. And, and to think that you, Ian, with no medical marijuana card, if you lived in this state, I could, for half of the price of the ticket, if you want, or half the price of the ticket, you could now begin to grow, and they couldn't do nothing. And well, it's nice that you guys have freedom in this area, but obviously you're not a, there's no such thing as a free state at this point. Um, and in well, fact, it isn't... Kind of freedom, pal. Is I, it I Washington? I really don't want your kind of freedom. Well, I don't because really know what that even means. Is, anybody who knows anything about business... Okay, I like the slaves the way they are. Okay, why the heck would I want to change that? What are you talking about? Free, free, and free, and and once they're in debt to you, they're as good as your slaves, anyways, aren't they? Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not interested in having any slaves. So the fact that you 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 consider people to be slaves, no, I don't. The fact that you consider uh, people to be slaves really kind of belies what you mean when you say you're free there. So I'm really confused. Well, free, it's them that ain't free. You know, gotcha. when you, start, you don't own, okay, didn't you talk about owning that building you're in? I have owned a, own a home in the past, yes. Okay, did you make payments on it? Yeah. So did you send them payments to your master? Um, They weren't my master. They're the people that gave well, me a loan. Well, he you interest, didn't he? He didn't do it for free, did he? Right, well, when you ask somebody for a favor in uh, the business world, you have to expect that there's going to be interest involved That's in it. that transaction. That's, That's not master and slave because it's a consensual transaction. I got involved well, in that because... the 
money doesn't really want to lose you. You're the best thing he's got going. You come every month, you give him the money. You give him a little mm -hmm. extra called interest. Why would he want to lose you? Right. So hey, I'm not his slave because I agreed to the deal. A slavery is inherently uh, non-consensual. Thank you very much for the okay, call, John. Whatever. Enjoy your cannabis. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I think I agree with him. Uh, John and I definitely do not have the same ideas about freedom. It's Free Talk Live. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction. A tummy tuck or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan? Penalties and interest killing you? Missing tax returns? Being garnished or levied? Not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the Tax Monkey now, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, that's 800-281-6030. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free 
Talk Live, you can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free here. The number is 855-453-MORE. More about the continuing failure of the city of Detroit, which in this case is actually good news because it means that about half of the parking meters in the city are not working. So free parking in downtown Detroit uh, for a lot of people every single day. But there's some other things too, uh, worth talking about, including Detroit's economic plan. They have a plan to get out of this whole bankruptcy thing, and it will hinge on one critical building. We'll tell you more about that coming up here in just a moment. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-453. We've got Skype. Skype on in at username lrn.fm. And Mark, you mentioned Pro XPN earlier. It is a sponsor of the phone lines here, and it's also a global virtual private network that encrypts your data online, meaning that as soon as, you know, before it even leaves your computer's network port, it's encrypted. So your internet service provider will not be able to know what you're doing anymore. Right now, they probably are logging everything you do, every search you make, every site you visit, for up to five years in some cases. And uh, that makes it easy for the government to come sniffing around and get all kinds of information about you. Maybe your internet service provider is just selling some of that information uh, to other co- uh, companies as well. So get yourself protected by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. You get the app. It's free for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, and Linux, though Linux setup's a little bit different there. Uh, you just get connected once you get that, and you will be all set. Now, it's, it's free to get started with, but there's also the premium account uh, that you can sign up for. One account works for all of your devices simultaneously. And what you want to do if you want to get the premium account at a special discount for Free Talk Live listeners is go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50. Now, this is the new code. The uh, other code, FTL20, will still work. But FTL50 gets you that 50% off of the annual account, which brings the price down to about $5 per month and if you use code FTLBTC, like Bitcoin, FTLBTC, and pay with Bitcoin, you'll save 62% off of the price of an annual account. So you get a, Those are some serious discounts. You get an even better discount if you pay with Bitcoin at proxpn.com slash FTL. They do not keep records of your online habits at all, and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. But what else do you get with the premium account? You get unlimited bandwidth, which is a huge difference between that and the free account where there's limited bandwidth. The servers are available around the world that you can access as a premium account holder, and you can even privately torrent. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 or FTLBTC if you're paying with Bitcoin for the even better discount at proxpn.com slash FTL. Let's go to the phones here as we continue with John in North Carolina. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, John. Hey, guys. How you doing? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Oh, thank you. A little bit nervous. I don't call radio shows that often. Don't worry about (laughs) it. You're uh, just on with a few guys here in a room. Yeah, it sounds, uh, I was listening to your uh, little commercial there about uh, Pro XPN. It sounds like maybe I should be uh, getting on that service Um, because I kind of had a little experience today that uh, really made me realize just how dead anonymity and privacy is on the Internet. Tell me about Uh, it. You you can't really. Well, I decided I was going to try and uh, set up a couple of accounts that were that were private, anonymous, you know, to post information about, you know, uh, freedom and liberty and uh, conservatives, con- conservatism and um, you know subjects such as that that could possibly get you in hot water if some employer searched your uh, you know Facebook account or some other accounts on the internet. Not really intending to you know put anyone down or do anything bad, but just to you know repost news articles and things relevant to you know internet security and privacy and other aspects like that. And I found that it is incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to uh, get through and, and do that without having some sort of identification information leaked out there. Just to be clear, um, I, I missed briefly what it was you said you were trying to create. Was it a Facebook page? No, I, I tried a couple of accounts. One was uh, I created an email account. Okay. Um, and I created a Twitter account. And that's all I was going to try right there. And I think you can do those two things pretty anonymously. Anonymous, yeah, sure. Well, you can't. I, I first connected to the Tor network you know, to make sure that I was being private there. Oh, you know, I see what I you mean. You went through Tor and, and Google blocked right. you from Tor? 
Well, it didn't block me. I got on to uh, Twitter, and, uh, well, I, first I went to uh, Outlook and set up a Hotmail account or, or whatever, and then I went on to Twitter, and I, I signed up there. And within minutes of signing up on Twitter, uh, I got a notification that the account was suspended. I hadn't even posted anything. I had just, like, uploaded a, a photo for the uh, profile pic, mm-hmm. you know, one for the background, and I subscribed to about 15 uh, – other people on Twitter, including you guys. Why was the account um, suspended? I, they won't tell you. Well, I don't know. I, can I, I have no idea. I have a speculation that sometimes there's a security feature in websites like Twitter or Gmail, and they will uh, block you out of your account if they notice that you've signed in, let's say, in France and then in yeah. Mexico, like yeah. right after. And with Tor, you're essentially rerouting your IP address to some other place in the world, like Germany. And and uh, right. Twitter might yeah. be trying to protect you. So, but just to clarify something, when you went to sign up yeah. for uh, what you said it was Hotmail or... Google Mail. Or did you try yeah, both? Well, it was uh, it was Hotmail. Um, and when went you went to, to try to sign up for Hotmail that, through Tor, what was it that you know blocked you? What stopped you from doing that? Well, it let me. That, this is the, this is the thing is that I, I was able to create both accounts. Oh, okay. Uh, but again, I'm sorry, I misunderstood moments, that. Yeah, within moments on Twitter, they suspended the account. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I suspect and, Derek might be right on the um, you know why they suspended. Now, now have, were you able to kind of log in and unsuspend it, or what's the status with the suspension? Well, it could be. The, the first time they did it on Twitter, um, there was a link that said, okay, why do we suspend accounts? So I clicked on it, and it says, because you violated some term of our service or whatever. Here's a link to the service. And I read that, and I did absolutely nothing on the list. Mm-hmm. Now, like I said, I hadn't even posted anything. I would added about 15 people to follow. And you it's know, when weird. I did that, uh, there was a checkbox. I could go in and click two checkbox saying I, I agree to abide by the rules and, mm-hmm. and unlock the account. Well, within another 20 minutes, they did it again. And I'd only posted like five things. And two of them were actually to Twitter asking, you know, what was it that caused my account to get suspended? <laughs> um, another one was a repost or a retweet of something that I saw in the feed. And this was how yeah, long, how recently that this happened? It was just an hour, a couple hours okay. ago. Yeah, weird. And, it also uh, makes a little sense yeah. because Tor will reset your identity every so often so that you're not using the same right. IP address as you were 40 minutes ago. So it might just be that Tor reset your identity and then all of a sudden and you're location. in France and yeah, in your yeah. location. But usually so, they'll tell you that, right? Like usually if yes. you log into a website, it'll say, hey, we're freezing your account because it looks like you were in Antarctica five right. minutes ago or something right. like yeah, that. Yeah, I've had that experience with Google, right? Because I do, part of my job is I travel a lot. So, mm-hmm. you know, right. I even go to Canada and, you know, a couple other places like that. And, but they're you know, not explaining that. They're not telling you that's the reason. For it. Right. Yeah. And so they had emailed my the second time it locked. There was, uh, of course, another thing here, check here. And, you know, they, they sent me an email to this Outlook account. So I'm in the process of responding to the email. It says respond to this email. as I can see that as a form of verification, you know, respond to the account. And then mm-hmm. they know it came from your account. And what happens is suddenly Outlook pops up. I've got like four messages in there and says, you know, there's <laughs> suspicious activity on your account. <laughs> you know, so it's like this loop of uh, misery. Wow. I don't you know, know what to tell you, man. It it's unfortunately not a uh, tech support them. show here. Yeah. So I, 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 I try. I tried ProXPN instead of uh, instead of Tor in this case because mm-hmm. it's unlikely to change your location. You mm-hmm. pick a location, right. say you pick the Netherlands or Singapore. Yeah, I would not use a U.S. Uh, based server with ProXPN. I would I would use the uh, the Netherlands server. That's uh, as I understand it, the best privacy protections through ProXPN. Right. Well, so that makes sense. And, you know, maybe give I'll that give a that shot, a John. And, or maybe the NSA is just targeting you for, you know, good laughs. It could be. Just screwing you with know, you. I mean, it's disappointing, though, you know, because, you know, you should be able to express yourself yeah. in public. No, yeah. I agree so, with you, man. Uh, and thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, and it, don't know what else to say. Hey, technology, sometimes it doesn't work out for you. But you can always try again, like make another email address, try another account, and see if they do the same thing to it. Toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. You take control of Free Talk Live. Crashed. 
The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting, insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. That's eight hundred nine five two fifty seven sixty. Eight hundred nine five two five seven six zero. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Themes Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Theme Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to themephone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. 855-450-3733. We've got all kinds of stuff on our website. You can go there and enjoy those features on the house. If you like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then you can shop with us. Just go to shop.freetalklive.com. You enter Amazon through the links that you'll find there, and there's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, Amazon US. You just go to the one that's right for you and get your shopping taken care of. Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. When you do that, same great prices, same huge selection 
the uh, the reviews, everything you're used to from Amazon. You're just entering through our affiliate link at shop.freetalklive.com. We're going to get right back into your phone calls. You can call in about anything. But coming up, Detroit's plan. They have an idea as to how to turn this whole thing around. Now, it uh, it's going to focus in on one building. And that's going to be really helpful, apparently, to the city. We'll uh, we'll let you know what they're going to do. Uh, but first, your calls. And also want to welcome News Talk 1140 KVLI out in Lake Isabella, California. They are on board uh, with Free Talk Live. They're taking us actually live. So we're after awesome. drive uh, out there in Lake Isabella all the way through uh, sign-off. It's a daytimer, as they call it, in the business. So they have to, uh, to sign off at sunset. So we will be taking you in through the close of business every day in Lake Isabella. So, That's awesome. Welcome. Yeah. So uh, welcome aboard. If you never heard the show before, you're in for something a little bit different. It's not one of those conserva clone shows. It's not a lefty show. We talk about freedom here on Free Talk Live. It's open phones every single night. And you are invited to be a first time caller here on the show uh, tonight. We always love to hear from new people. In fact, new callers get preference over the people we've heard from uh, before. Not that we don't appreciate our people who call in regularly. It's just nice to hear from uh, from new voices. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So let's do that and go international to Saskatoon, where Mike is on the line. Hello, Mike. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. Um, I'm just going to change the pace up a little bit. I don't know if you've seen this because this news just came out about Robin Williams, and uh, apparently he's committed suicide um, allegedly, yes. Allegedly, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little emotional about it because depression is still something that is kind of taboo to talk about. I, I, I guess that people is aren't it? comfortable with it. Sure. Well, I know in, in my family, people, there's been issues with depression. Like with, I've had depression. I've been suicidal before. And uh, I have had a family member commit suicide. And, and I guess with our... The younger members of my family were more likely to talk about it, but the you know my parents don't like to talk about it, and 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 I guess for some reason um, it just kind of struck me. Usually I don't care when a celebrity dies, unless there's maybe someone that I had some affinity for, and there's not there's not many, but but for some reason this one just kind of hit me a little bit. And, well, who doesn't uh, like Robin uh, Williams? I right. Mean, I, I mean, I think that this, that's that part of this. Thing. The guy's a mega star. Yeah, <laughs> and and how uh, it's so uh, sad, right? That Robin Williams has been responsible for bringing so much happiness to people's lives. I mean, smiles to people's faces. Potentially the funniest guy on the planet. He's one of them, for sure. I mean, Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, Mork and Mindy. I mean, so many just iconic, classic, uh, comedic roles that I'm sure have touched millions of individuals. For him to have brought so much joy to the world, but yet still be struggling with with depression. At least that's what the release that I saw here. His wife made comments about how he had recently been... Uh, really struggling with depression and uh, you know how ironic that you know he's so great for you know that everybody in the world has been you know in, yeah. enriched by this man's life and and yet he is depressed it's really sad and when and when i was younger i didn't understand it at all and i dated a girl that had like sort of clinical depression for a while and i didn't get it i thought oh can't you just choose to be happy can't you just get over this and then later on in in the years as i started going through my own stuff i started realizing how the reality of it, you know, that it takes, you know, treatment. Like for me, it was is therapy and medication help me a lot, and um, it, you know, it's just it's it's sad to see that someone, you know, had to felt so much pain. They felt so much pain that they chose to die, if, if that's what really happened. But you know, yeah. you know, obviously suicide does happen. But to feel so much pain, or and, and I remember a few weeks ago you were talking about that fellow in Keene uh, that had shot himself when he was surrounded by the police. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that might have been anxiety about what was about to happen, but I just, you know, sometimes people have so much pain that they would choose to die. And, uh, I, you know, and it can go in so, sort of all sorts of directions. I might call back sometime to tell my story about how the government has kind of screwed me over <laughs> and caused some of my own pain and, and depression. But um, th- that's all I really wanted to say was that I just wanted to highlight this sort of thing that if someone does have pain and depression it's you know it's hard it's easy to judge someone or i used to say oh they must be cowards they took the cowards way out it's not cowardly to end your pain like i don't think that anymore it takes a lot of guts to make the decision to actually do something like that it's scary it's really scary and well 
I don't know. I'm just less judgy of people now of, of that. I'm less judgy, too. I used to be outraged when people would uh, would would commit suicide. I mean, here you have the, you know, the the only gift you really get, which is life. And then, you know, you throw it away. And uh, I, I never understood it. I, I, you know, fortunately, I, this isn't one of the things that I have to deal with in life. It's not going to be the thing that happens to me. At least yeah. I'm highly skeptical. I don't know, you might well. end up with some sort of terminal disease where you're like, screw That's this. That's not depression. Okay. <laughs> That's a you were talking about suicide, not okay. specifically depression. Fine. Mm -hmm. um, the but I mean, what I've come, the conclusion I've come to is, is that people make lots of decisions in life that I'm never going to understand. They're just not. I'm just never not going to understand. I don't understand why people want sexual reassignment surgery. I don't understand why people vote Democrat. I understand why people want pineapple on their pizza. I don't understand. But it doesn't matter whether I understand or not. Whatever it is, those people that want pineapple on their pizza must be experiencing a tremendous amount of pain if they would go and do that to themselves, right? So why um, okay. would I judge? A lot of times people feel alone in their depression, uh, and that Which sort of gets... ironic, right? Because there's so many people who are apparently suffering from yes, this. Yes, it is. They're not alone. Which and... is why I was surprised when you guys were saying it's like people don't talk about it. I, really? I've seen, I see stuff about depression all over the place. Well, mental illness is considered taboo. It's uh, got a negative connotation. Uh, I think even calling it mental illness is insulting to, to people who suffer from depression. I want to let the listeners know that there is always someone to listen if you're in a depressed state or considering suicide. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline uh, is always available 24 hours a day, and it's 1-800-273-TALK. 1-800-273-TALK, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Uh, so, Mike, you know, you, you brought this to the table tonight. What was it that inspired you to, you know, come forward with this? Because like you said, you know, there's this taboo, apparently. Well, I, and I guess the taboo, uh, like what was just pointed out, is more about the mental illness part and where people uh, – I, I don't call depression a disease. It, it's, not like, it's not like that. It's not like having cancer, right? Um, it's a condition that is treatable and, and recoverable. And I guess it's almost – it's taboo to tell people that you have been – that you've had depression. Like not, I'm not talking just being blue for a few days. You know, depression and being blue for a few days because you broke up with your girlfriend are different things. Sure. And, and even amongst my friends, you know, there, there has been a trend more lately to be more open with it. And sometimes you find out about, oh, wow, my, this person had depression. And even me, I, and I've had it, and I still sometimes think differently about my friends that I know have had depression or have had to have been medicated for some reason because of it. it, it, it it's weird. And I, I'm, I'm 40, so maybe it's my age or I don't know, or it just wasn't talked about much when I was younger, uh, it was still made as a joke. And, mm. and so I guess um, I, I'm just hoping that there's better understanding of it. And like I said, I even used to be more, more of the, can't you just get over it? Or why aren't you, can't you just be happy? And, and that, and that was my ignorance. Really, it's just ignorance. I didn't have the knowledge. And that's what it was. Thank you for the so, call tonight, Mike. I do appreciate yeah. you sharing that with us. And feel free to, uh, Thanks, to check guys. in with us again. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, now, okay, so I understand where he's coming from. Like, there is a clinical depression. There's chemical imbalances and things like that. But isn't there also something to being positive? I mean, doesn't that help? Right. Like for me, that's been helpful in my life to uh, to think positively, to, you know, look at uh, look at the things that are good in life rather than the things that are bad in life. I mean, if you have a problem with depression, changing the way that you, you sort of narrate your life could help. Right. No, it's like telling a paraplegic to just go play basketball. Like mm -hmm. some people don't have the ability like they're not in the same mental space that you are when you say, well, I'll just choose to be happy. This is a bad situation, but I'll just, you know, choose to look at the best part of it you know it's it's in my experience that's not they what it's just like can't do it you're saying they just right can't, it's you're asking someone to do say something nice that they about can't. themselves or you know positive affirmation i think those things can be trained they can be learned that's what I say. you have to take it, it takes practice it takes effort to do things like positive affirmations oh which, yeah to me when i first started doing them they felt very silly i mean i thought i felt ridiculous saying them but uh, they're very important. Now, we can talk more about it here in yeah. a moment. 855 450 free. And it's absolutely a process. 855 450 3733. It's Free Talk Live. 
Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, August 11th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,310. Silver opened today at $19.97, and Bitcoin is trading around $588.65. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. In the news, the New York Post reports that the New York City City Council will not be accepting over 30,000 signatures for the high-rise safety initiative. That's a measure that would require an investigation into all high-rise collapses on or since September 11th of 2001. City Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito told The Post that the city will not waste taxpayer dollars by, quote, humoring conspiracy theorists. Activists and 9-11 victims' family members with the New York City Coalition for Accountability Now have worked since March to gather over 100,000 signatures to place the measure on the November ballot. The group released a statement Friday stating that they had filed suit against the city. Representatives of the city will be required to appear in court for an initial hearing on Thursday, August 14th. This past Saturday, a crowd of 75 found themselves at Brave New Books in Austin for the Alliance of Austin Agoras 8th Networking Party. Speakers included Catherine Bleich of TheBitMom.com, Jessica and Justin Armand of My Magic Mud, and Tracy Ward of Pinky's Paleo Tias. The speakers told inspirational stories of their own agorist journeys and left the crowd with a series of practical steps that one can take to join the counter-economy. The speeches can be heard and found online at SovereignLiving.com in the podcast feed. If you're interested to learn more about unschooling, a philosophy of child-led education, there's an unschool support group meeting scheduled for tonight at Central Market North on Lamar in Austin. Join experienced unschoolers and those seeking to learn more in the outdoor eating area by the playground anytime from 6.30 until 9 this evening. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all-natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live each Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's Sundays at 4 
1370 AM. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 11th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A new report released by a civilian watchdog agency accuses the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department of allowing their worst employees to continue working amid a number of scandals involving officers facing criminal charges for abuse. The 62-page report was authored by Merrick Bob, the Board of Supervisors Special Counsel. Bob concludes that the former sheriff and his chief assistant allowed and possibly promoted violence. Since December 20th, sheriff's officials have been charged for various crimes, including attacking inmates and jail visitors. On Sunday, scientists at the Stockholm Environmental Institute published a study declaring the proposed Keystone XL pipeline could increase carbon dioxide emissions four times higher than estimated by the State Department. The study was published in the journal Nature Climate Change. Lead author Pete Erickson and his team say the government failed to account for increased consumption of oil as a result of expected price drops. The American Petroleum Institute said the study was irrelevant because the tar sands would be developed with or without the pipeline. Well, this weekend, Adam Kokesh will keynote the second annual Freedom and Unity Festival held in Vermont. Organizers have encouraged attendees to arrive Friday night and enjoy a relaxed evening in like-minded company. Saturday will feature live music and a variety of speakers and workshops. Pre-register if you're interested in a music workshop with renowned musician Jordan Page. Bardo Farms will serve one of their famous pig roasts. Organized events begin at 9 o'clock on Saturday, August 16th at Magic Mountain in southern Vermont. The event is pet friendly. Learn more at vermontersforliberty.org. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Corey Moore Show. Live each Friday night, 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern. Listen live at CoreyMooreShow.com and LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, August 11th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. In order to more accurately portray the risks of smoking, the FDA has approved putting a picture of Trish on the cover of all cigarette packs. Clinical trials suggest that images of diseased organs, corpses, and deformed infants all prove less effective than a single photograph of Trish smiling. Smokers can expect to see the graphic campaign as early as next month, paired with a simple line of text that reads, Cigarettes Cause Trish. In science news, a new study finds that every style of parenting inevitably produces disturbed and miserable adults. Despite a great variance in parenting styles across populations, from overprotective to permissive, the end product is always the same, a profoundly flawed and joyless human being. One bright note of the study, adults can find temporary happiness when they're able to perpetuate the cycle of human misery by having children. In other news, the Pulitzer board adds a giant pumpkin category, and a local man's utter failure in life is a bit of a sore spot. For more news, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live. We will take your calls about anything you want to discuss. The toll free number is 855 450 free. Detroit's parking meters may not be working. About half of them are broken. Last we heard, about half of the street lights in Detroit are also not functioning. Uh, things are pretty bad there in Detroit, but the city bosses have a plan to turn things around. We'll share that with you here in a little bit. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. The we in the studio is me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Derek J. joining us from his website, DerekJ.me. You can go there and experience all manner of Derek J. You've got video that it seems like you're shooting almost daily, if not... It is daily. Yeah, yeah. It is daily. Uh, so you can kind of watch Derek's life uh, video vlogging. Is yeah, it, is it, it would be that? like The Truman Show, but for Liberty. Yeah, without all the captivity. <laughs> right. Well. well, there's some captivity, but it's more metaphorical <laughs> more than anything. Bouts of captivity, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, check out DerekJ.me for more Derek J there. He's got all kinds of radio shows. He's doing like Marathon Radio Day. You did the Angel Clark show from 5 to 7 Eastern. Free- no, started with Freedom Fiends at 1 a.m., 1 to 3 oh, a.m. This morning. This Good morning. And then then uh, yeah. 5 to 7 in the afternoon, Angel Clark, you're on with us from 7 to 10 at night Eastern. And then Freedom later Fiends tonight, again. you're doing Freedom Fiends again. Jeez. 
That's why I called him the hardest working man in uh, at least Liberty show business. His voice is going to give out. In this household, at the very least. Uh, let's continue here. We've got your calls. Let's talk to Pat listening in Jersey City. You're on Free Talk Live. Pat. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Matt. Oh, sorry about that, Matt. Doing? They apparently did not get you to spell your name when you called in. Go ahead with uh, with your That's thoughts. All right. uh, I've got a few things to talk about, so, you know, be, be brief if you'd like. Uh, okay. I called in the other day, and I wanted to thank Mark for coming around and saying that he does shop locally and uh, and that he, he likes supporting his local farms. That's great. I want to apologize if I was confrontational about... Um, about all of that, voting with your dollars, and I understand if I caught you off guard. I barely I, recall, well, by the no, way. No, <laughs> I, I remember the conversation, but I mean, you know, this is talk radio, and uh, people have their opinions, and their opinions are, you know, they, they hopefully they believe thoroughly in opinion they'd be willing to uh, make a telephone call about. So I've got no thoughts on that. And I've always, you know, I am the local shopper, so. Great. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you. And, uh, the reason I'm calling, actually, is because I'm interested in a lot of things you guys talk about. And one of the things I'm interested in is using Bitcoin instead of the dollar. Yeah. And yep. I work at a fairly large corporate bakery, and uh, I feel like it would be hard for me to get them to pay me in Bitcoin. What do you think about that? You said you feel like it would be hard for you to get them to do that? Yeah, it would probably be impossible for for me to convince them to pay me in Bitcoin so that I can... It'd probably be, be a, quite a challenge, yes. Have you asked? No. Starts with asking. I totally agree with Derek J. I was going to say it, it would be a challenge, likely, because corporations are very slow to change. However, uh, and as the bigger we've seen, that The bigger that it, they are, the more that yeah, is so. As we've seen, there are some corporations who are embracing Bitcoin. In fact, we saw the story about Overstock.com. They're paying their bonuses this year to employees in Bitcoin, or they're actually offering. So the employee gets a choice. If they choose the Bitcoin bonus versus right. the cash bonus, they actually get a bigger bonus uh, in Bitcoin. So it's possible, and you're right, Derek, you have to ask in order to know for sure. Get the conversation started. And there are other special cases like Subway, which does not accept Bitcoin, but there are Subway restaurants that do, do accept Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. So you might be in one of those places, Matt, which uh, can't accept it on the full level, but uh, maybe in your store they could. Well, the company I work for definitely does not accept Bitcoin from their customers. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it would be something to ask about. So, um, if you don't mind, uh, I've got two more things. All right. Well, first of all, I want to say it's just really sad about Robin Williams. I just heard that right now on the air. Mm. And uh, I wanted to remember his uh, his role as Genie in Aladdin. Oh, another good yeah. role. Yeah. yeah. Very memorable. Good songs, yeah. too, in Aladdin. Derek J. and I like to sing uh, some Aladdin songs sometimes. Whole New World. Yeah. yeah, but we've never done Friend Like Me. That was the Robin Williams one, right? Yep, that's From right. Aladdin. All right, last Great. point. Go ahead. Oh, God. Um, I'd love to move to Keene, but I need a job. Okay, moving on. I would recommend Keen moving Cameron. to New Hampshire, and uh, there's plenty of jobs all across New Hampshire. Manchester is a great place to live. There's lots mm-hmm. of jobs there, lots of people in the Liberty community. And Matt, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. And uh, that wasn't bad. It was actually uh, four topics in less than four minutes. Wow. Me, so pretty good. We'll continue here. Your calls are welcome. We go to Richie, listening in New Hampshire. Richie, you're on Free Talk Live. Um, I'm calling because I saw the video of. Uh, in downtown Keene of uh, Derek J. getting assaulted. Which and, one? Uh, was... <laughs> there have been two <laughs> uh, recently. The, uh, the most recent one where he needed to use two different cameras because they, they kept getting broken. Uh-huh, yeah. Yes. Um, did you s- decide what you were going to do? I, I was walking said that you had to do some thinking about whether you're going to press charges or if like, you wanted to hold them accountable. Yeah, uh, I have thought about what to do with that, and I decided to just take a step back and uh, let the police do whatever they were going to do. Now, they interviewed me right after the assaults happened and said uh, in pretty clear language that there were two assaults that happened, Mm -hmm. given the reports they had heard from me and the others. And uh, it seems that without any provoking on my behalf they were uh, interested in pursuing justice themselves uh the two uh, alleged assaulters have been arrested that's correct uh, and charged with i believe simple assault and one of them was charged with 
uh, what was it, criminal mischief mm -hmm. or destruction yeah. of your camera. That's right. So that's the current status with that. Yeah, they've also been given no contact orders for me, so they can't speak to me in the street. I'd like to point out right. how effective using cameras is in this circumstance. We've talked on Free Talk Live not just about using cameras to uh, point out when bureaucrats are breaking the law, mm -hmm. but you can use them very effectively to point out when other people are breaking the law. Fortunately, these people did, weren't uh, so thoroughly committed to their violence that they were willing to kill you, but, you know, hey, they're going to be held, held to account and likely, maybe, they won't uh, resort to violence in the future, at least not in front of a camera. Richie, go ahead. Yeah, because, um, you know, I mean, when I first, when I saw the court video, I was like, wow, they charged him with the felony. I, I didn't think that he intended to do that much damage. He should obviously pay restitution for that. But then when they came out and just started assaulting you on the street, it's like these people are not learning from their lesson at all. Right. And, they, and, and something needs to change. I mean, I, I know you don't like the prison system. I don't like it either. But it is the system that we have. I mean, the only other option would have been to take them to small claims court, which yeah. is a joke in and of itself, too. Richie, so kind of having I'm, trouble with your phone. It's a little low volume, but I thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate the comments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Yeah, Derek J., I mean, how do you respond to uh, some of the critics who might say, like, well, you libertarians, you guys are against the state, but here you are utilizing the state in order to, co to go after people. What? Aren't you just a hypocrite? I guess so. I mean, yeah, right? Because I, this is, I, I'm using the state. I'm not, uh, I'm not refusing to talk to the police when they come up and ask me, Derek, what happened? I mean, I'm just trying to live uh, according to my principles as best I can. And I don't think that I've violated my principles in speaking with the police no, and speaking truthfully about what happened. So. I don't think it's right to label that as hypocrisy because right now the state's the only option you have. It's a <laughs> it's a non-desirable option as far as options go, but well, sometimes they can get it right. Sometimes they do go after criminals, and sometimes those criminals are, you know, they do have to pay restitution. I've seen, you know, people who have actually stolen property have to pay restitution to, you know, different stores in the area, for instance, so... There is that. Well, I mean, th what our advocation here is, is that there be a an option in the arena of dispute resolution organizations, that there be competition and that people be able to choose between them. That way you'll see innovation. You'll see, um, you know, you'll see better customer service. You'll see lower prices. Sure. But we don't have that and we're nowhere close to that. But until time, so. such time that there's a monopoly in dispute resolution, I see nothing, not one thing immoral about using that dispute resolution organization. Please call in and tell me what is immoral yeah. about using the state for their, you know, they're like one legitimate role. Toll free number tonight, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can share your thoughts right here about whatever's on your mind. And uh, speaking of recording people, we've got a story about that coming up too. It's Free Talk Live crashed the death of the dollar it's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking it explores what our government's reaction to a u.s currency collapse would be and when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is we're not picking the fight the government already did that we'll just be fighting back for a change this is a great book but don't take my word for it look at the reviews on amazon bernie says crashed is a really terrifying trip it is thought-provoking it makes you wonder what if could this happen Gary Jones adds, this is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting, insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's 
what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas. Liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Survival Training School of California. So who needs outdoor survival training? Anyone who works, plays, or travels in the great outdoors. Why take a survival course? Because if anything happens at all when you're in the outdoors, to yourself or your partner, it can be hours or even days before rescuers can reach you, which means it's up to you to handle it. Did you know the most common outdoor survival situation is the lost or injured day hiker? You want to do the right thing, the responsible thing, and be prepared to handle the onset of any emergency for yourself or your loved ones, then you should do what the best do, what the U.S. Marine Corps Mountain Warfare Training Center survival instructors do, what the U.S. Navy Search and Rescue, what the U.S. Air Force, Stanford University, and Joshua Tree National Park, among other organizations do, is go with California, excuse me, it's CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. That's where the Survival Training for, uh, School of California is located on the web. They are one of the premier survival training schools in the, in the country and around the world. People travel from all over the world, and people travel as far as 3,000 miles just for the weekend courses for CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. They've got classes coming up here in the very near future, including a pocket knife only training class. Go to CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. Check out the classes that are coming up. Beware of the copycat, copycat sites with similar names. Be sure you see the quotes and the press links. It's, um, it's the school of internationally renowned instructor Thomas Coyne. CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. I'll give you the telephone number, too. 805-503-8861. CaliforniaSurvivalTraining.com. All right, so let's go right back into your phone calls and thoughts. We've been all over the map from Detroit's parking meters not working. About half of them are broken. 
uh, to depression. We've got Gavin on the line listening in St. George, Utah to KZNU. Hey, Gavin. Hey, how's it going, guys? You're on the air. Hey, Go you know, I was just listening to you guys on the way home, and I wanted to uh, to share something that, that kind of helped me out. I had a, a personal tragedy. A, a very dear friend of mine uh, committed suicide back in May. It's a quick it's a quick little thing here. Please. It's not my quote, but I'd like to share it if you guys don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so somebody asked this gal online, and I can give you know the credit. Uh, my educator wife said, make sure you tell them it's not yours. Uh, but somebody <laughs> asked her how depression felt, and this is what she could come up with. It feels like I'm walking upstream through a current strong enough to pull me over uh, 10 times over, to pull me under 10 times over. There are others walking with me, but they're walking along the banks, telling me to just get out of the water. But instead of extending a helping hand, they just move on and leave me behind. Every once in a while, I find a rock that is strong enough for me to lean on, and I can rest for a bit. But the rocks always get tired of holding me up, and when they let go, I'm left drowning throwing 50 feet back again. And nothing is harder than standing up in that current when everything in you is telling you how much easier things will be if you just let yourself get dragged under. So that, that's it. I, maybe it reads better uh, than, it, than it sounds on radio. I'm not really sure. Um, it really rang true in my life. And, I, and, you know, given the tragedy, I guess, that happened with Robin Williams recently, I'm sure that's what spurred on this talk. And, uh, you know, and it just kind of struck a nerve with me when I read this. So I wanted to share it. I apologize if it doesn't come off as well. No, I thought it was. Radio, uh, I believe it. Yeah, I thought it was great. Shocking. Um, yeah, this is what what I've heard is, is just sort of it's hard to get out of bed and it's hard to want to do things. You just don't want to do it. Well, I, I know I, I can, you know, of course, we can only speak from our own personal experiences. And, uh, you know, th- those obviously shape and mold the way we think and how who we are. But I, I can say, you know, um, you know, in my own personal life, there there's definitely been times where, you know, where I've struggled with depression, and and I think that um, that you guys were talking earlier about you know the stigma the stigma that's attached to you know describing it as mental illness, you know, and I think to be I think the only way that we can get past it, and you know, it, it, it it's not an epidemic that's going away, you know, it's not a disease, you know, that <laughs> that's going to be eradicated, but I think um, you know some of that stigma can be can be detached if if only there's more uh, people brave enough and uh, willing enough to you know admit that they that they have indeed struggled with uh you know those sort of things as well so as i said just just wanted to share with you guys i, I do enjoy the talk show i consider myself you know quite the libertarian uh mm-hmm. although uh given where i am in the country it doesn't often feel like it um I don't know if you guys know much about Utah, but I'm definitely out here on an island. I'm a transplant. but uh, <laughs> All right, man. Well, you know, uh, as, hey, thanks for sharing your <laughs> thoughts said, tonight, Gavin. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Me. Y'all have a good night, all, all right? right? Thanks for the call. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, Derek J., you uh, used to work at one of these uh, hotlines. Any uh, any thoughts on, on that? Uh, yeah, I like his characterization of uh, depression as, as that um, as in the quote that he shared. And about mental illness, he brought up the, the stigma of, of mental illness, that um, people think there's something wrong with you or that you're just not motivated enough or there are these people on the sidelines that are just like offering advice, like, oh, just pick yourself up. And mm-hmm. for people suffering with depression, it's just not like that. And I gave the analogy of it's like telling a paraplegic to go play basketball, but it, it's it's something like that with uh, mental illnesses that I think People don't. If if I were walking around with a broken leg, people would say, "Oh, how'd you break your leg?" Or look, you know, look at that. But mental illnesses you can't see, and so people are more want to hide them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want to be as open about it. And I think that's what creates the stigma. Like um, Gavin in St. George was just saying, you know, people aren't talking about it. Maybe it's harder to empathize because you know, if you see somebody with a broken leg, you can think, "Boy, that would be terrible to have a broken leg." But uh, with depression thing, maybe people who haven't experienced the the severity of what these folks are talking about just can't really envision what that must be like. I mean, well, I've certainly been down and out a little bit here and there, but nothing like throughout months or anything like that. And, and a lot of times for a lot of people, not everybody, but they they want help. Did you hear the part in the poem where they're, you know, they, they reaching they, out? Yeah, yeah, they, they're, yeah. You know, they're reaching out. Well, they, they want help. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm sort of busy in my life. I had a friend who this this happened to, and I mm-hmm. tried over the course of days to be there for her, but then over the course of weeks, I'm like, this is an attention black hole, uh-huh. and I'm just not interested in this. Yes, and, 
I, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be mean, but my life is mine and I'm jealous of it. I, I protect it jealously. And mm -hmm. I, y you, when, when you've got a situation like that, it's like, eh, you know, what, 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 what am I supposed to do here? I'm not a psychiatrist. I've got to make a living. I want my own free time to do my own stuff. I've got to sleep. Yes. And it's hard to find the line between, like, which are just your loser friends and which are people who are su actually suffering from a mental illness. Like, mm. it could just be that they're lazy and unmotivated and they want your attention all the time. And that could be... And depression's an excuse. Right. It could be, yeah, a real time suck, uh, like Mark was saying. And so that's why I recommend to people, you know, rather than, uh, you know, if you have friends who you can talk to, great. That's a, that's You're really lucky. A um, family... That's even luckier. But uh, if you don't have someone to talk to, there are free phone lines that uh, are manned 27, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, well, always we, ready to take take your calls. I'm glad we came back to the topic because, and we can continue it here in a moment, especially if you have something you want to add, we'd love to hear from you at 855-450-FREE, the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855-450-3733. More on depression here in moments because i understand that there's a chemical depression but is it possible that you could just put yourself into a depression from having really depressing negative thoughts on a constant basis and ch can you change that uh it's free talk live i think so do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe as the stock market hits new highs the middle class are dying Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to sources, all 6.5 million residents of Indiana spontaneously formed thousands of perfectly uniform rows throughout the state Monday morning and established a collective consciousness. Saying, we are Indiana, the new hive mind talked and moved in unison with citizens working together to build a massive geometric superstructure in downtown Indianapolis where they would gather to sleep, breed, and feed. All the for Indiana. All the for Indiana. 
The collective state went on to report that soon Ohio, Illinois, Michigan, Kentucky, and Canada would all become Indiana. Persons close to Phoenix area friends Jake Welter and Mike Seflin confirmed Friday that the two men are absolutely incapable of greeting each other like normal human beings. Beep, 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 beep. Sources say the two full-grown men simply cannot walk into a room and shake each other's hands, relying instead on elaborate dances, forced pop culture references, and extended fake fighting. Neither Welter nor Seflin was available for comment as they were busy pretending to rip each other's faces off. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. got to make them though the toll-free number is 855 450 free and don't let depression be your excuse for not calling free talk live tonight uh we do really want to hear from you it's interesting to get that kind of perspective on what it really means to to be depressed i'm i'm like our earlier caller who you know i i i mean i guess i can empathize somewhat because everybody's been down and out Mm -hmm. before at some point everybody down and out kind of means poor you some, know, some bad blue news is probably blue? the best term. Okay, to bummed, bummed yeah, out bummed. about that. Bum's a good one. That's uh, fine. You know, everybody's been through that. Everybody's had a tough time in their life that has been difficult. Uh, but you know, most people come out of it. Now, obviously, there's this clinical depression or chemical depression where people are are medicating. As I understand, I it, don't right? know if anyone knows what depression really is. Okay, well, there are. I people think we who can just e- to the drugs. We though, can right? just examine, you know, the effects of when people take certain drugs or if they live a certain way. Like we can just examine what we can see, right? But we, I don't think that there's a chemical imbalance that's really being measured in people's brains. I think that's a myth. Hmm. See, I always, so I can't say I know much of, of anything about it. I mean, I, I know I've heard that there's a chemical depression where people have to take some sort of chemical in order to balance whatever chemical it is that's, uh, I don't know if it's a dopamine or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not a. Oh, he's I'm, talking about dopamine and serotonin, yeah. 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 Um, to balance that out, and then you know they feel better. Uh, so I mean I can't deny that person's experience, right? They're having well, that experience, right? But that doesn't mean that they have some mental chemical imbalance that's being corrected with the drug. It could just mean that they're masking their emotions with a drug. It could mean that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, so, but that's just what I'm told, right? Like yeah. that's the experience of some people. But I was asking earlier about this sort of negative mentality that some people have, and it's a fairly prevalent one. And you can't blame people for having it. You know, if their if their job sucks or their home life is awful or their family's abusive or you know whatever it is that's that's happening to that person in in their life, uh, those negative circumstances could create sort of patterns of thought in mm-hmm. one's mind that are also very negative patterns. Maybe thoughts of unworthiness, like, well, I must suck. Maybe it's not me. It's or maybe it's not them. Maybe it's me. Uh, I'm not worthy, or I'm not a good person, or just kind of this this uh, parroting of these negativities that people can go through in their minds. Um, I know I've experienced some of that, but I think if you stay in those places and you keep repeating negative things about yourself, about how stupid you are, how awful a person, oh, I must be a bad person, etc., oh, it's going to be a terrible day today, just always being negative— couldn't that put you in a place where you're more likely to suffer from depression? And is it possible to begin changing that? Not overnight. You're not going to go from depressed to happy in 24 hours. But well, uh, I, I think, think that- you really said so, um, an important thing there. You said that uh, these things are happening to people. And there's no better way to guarantee unhappiness or no, no better way to uh, bet on unhappiness than to have things happen to you mm-hmm. rather than happening to things. Because when you are at cause in the center of your life, rather than sort of, you know, this thing's happening to me, that thing's, the teacher doesn't like me, mm-hmm. my uh, my girlfriend or boyfriend doesn't like me, my parents won't let me do what, what, what I want. These are all victim statements. Um, you know, fire the teacher, fire the boyfriend. Fire the girlfriend. And here's here's some here's some exciting stuff when it comes to parents. You are free to leave. Generally, I mean, you know, not every not everybody's free to leave, but you know, you, you can go good news, you can get a job and you can go support yourself and you don't have to deal with that whole parenting thing. Or you can try to redefine the relationship. Don't do it from a petulant standpoint. 
Do it from a standpoint of power. I'm bringing something new to the relationship. And, uh, you know, I don't know what that is. What do your parents well, want? You're talking about a major, and, and I'm glad you highlighted what I said there because I was actually thinking about pointing that out as well. Um, when you take the viewpoint of things are happening to you, it's a very kind of defeatist, uh, sit back and let it happen uh, attitude. Whereas if you can create how you are in response to things that happen, because uh, things are happening, right? And it's a big, uh, it's it's a big step or a big jump to come to the conclusion that it's all you that's creating those things in your life. That can be that's kind of like this uh, metaphysical idea that maybe you know going a little bit too far uh, for some people to really be able to to grasp that. Well, I think but everybody understands that they have control over. You have control of how you think, right? You have control of how you feel. I think. Go ahead, Mark. You well, were going to give us something else here. Well, yeah, I, real quick, what I want to tell you about My Magic Mud. My Magic Mud is a remedy for your teeth, and what it does is, is it's made of... Uh, Yellow teeth can be depressing, I'd like to say, and this can help with that. You know, <laughs> bad oral, oral hygiene is probably the single biggest reason why people are by themselves, mm, yes. um, and, you know, <laughs> fact is that uh, being with somebody, orgasms, these things are great ways to feel better. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, keeping a clean mouth important really really important i you know i mean I, I don't find anything in this world less attractive than a you know yucky mouth and so you can rid your mouth of bacteria that cause cavities very in, in a very interesting way so my magic mud is completely black it's made of uh, that's bentonite clay and also uh, charcoal and they bond directly to the um you know the bacteria and pull them right out of your mouth also your feet your teeth feel sort of polished and even the next morning after your brush which was really unusual for me as far as uh, teeth go and sensitivity if you've got gum sensitivity or something like that my magic mud's great for that there's no taste for people that don't like the taste of uh toothpastes it's it's amazing stuff completely uh, fine to swallow no big deal go to MyMagicMud.com, listen to the interview with uh, Dr. Griffin Cole where he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. As a matter of fact, we just put up a video uh, for, for My Magic Mud. It's at mud.freetalklive.com. I thought it was a great video. I wanted to link to it because it, it really mirrors some of my experiences with My Magic Mud. It's mud.freetalklive.com. All right, let's go. Uh, we can come back to depression here in a moment. we got Gabriel on the line listening to Talk Radio 850 in Raleigh. Hey, Gabriel, you're on Free Talk Live. All right, thank you for taking the call. Sure, go ahead. Listen, I've, yeah, I've been put out with this uh, Iraqi war. Um, I feel that the USA was not on the high moral ground. It uh, ra rarely now is. Now or before? <laughs> which which Iraqi war? This is on number three now. Even before. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Bush was there to steal the oil. We weren't there for freedom and democracy. He took the USA for a ride. I remember people back then saying things like, well, at least we'll have lower gas prices. Now, how did that work out for you, by the way? <laughs> oh, no, of course. It, Iraq was not going to let Bush steal the oil. Now we uh, can't even buy the oil because the animal George Bush started saying that uh, Iraq is holding out on us. This is a cycle from the word go. Yeah, it's frustrating. And, of course, it's not just uh, Iraq where the U.S. government is throwing its weight around and bombing uh, and killing innocent people. So I definitely share uh, some of your frustrations there. Anything yeah, else you want to get out? Needs to be, yeah, Bush needs to be behind bars. Well, now, of he course, Barack Obama election. has continued uh, the fighting, right? Like Barack Obama's just now, didn't he? He's back there now. Send some more troops over there, didn't he? Yeah, when I think he sent troops somewhere else. Barack Obama is not the Barack Obama that we knew in 2008. The presidency oh, yeah, yes. and the power of the presidency went to his head. There you go. That's what happens. The, the fact is that uh, power corrupts. And neither was George Bush. George Bush ran on a uh, campaign. No passionate of, conservative. Of a, right, and smaller government and no nation building specifically is what he said. So that was a lie. Uh, what do you know? The, uh, the politicians lied to you. Shocking. Hey, Gabriel, are you willing to withhold your war taxes? Oh. No, no, they, 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 they'll probably arrest me. Mm. But Bush is an animal. He should be behind bars for what he did. 
Thank you, Gabriel, for your call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. And that's why the government keeps getting away with it. That's why they can successfully murder uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of uh, innocent people around the globe. Because you'll just pick the other team the next time. Because, you know, you're just going to keep keep on paying for it. I mean, they've got you scared. You know they're killers, so you're afraid they're going to hurt you, right? Reasonable fear. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. But to me, that's just more reason to not pay them because they're a criminal gang and you shouldn't encourage criminality by giving them money. More coming up here. You can take control. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade-grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Take 
Central, toll free, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on the site. So once again, that's freetalklive.com. And you can support the show by becoming an amplifier. Amp.freetalklive.com is where you can go to do that for five bucks a month. We'll take the five bucks in and invest it into Free Talk Live, getting on more radio stations now with over 160 radio stations. It's been a, it's been a good past couple of months here. On Free Talk really? Live. Really? Over 160? Over 160 now. So uh, it's thanks to listeners like you for becoming Free Talk Live amplifiers. If we didn't have Free Talk Live amplifiers, we, I wouldn't be able to afford to pay Daryl, our uh, Friday night co-host, to make phone calls to radio stations uh, with me during the week. And that's been a big help. He brought on two, of, uh, two out of the five newest stations that we have. So that's definitely working. And thank you to our amplifiers for helping make that possible. You can help get Free Talk Live on more radio stations and bring more internet listeners on board by becoming an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can use any major credit card through PayPal, or you can use Visa and MasterCard right there on the website. As we continue here, still to come, the secret to turning Detroit around. We'll tell you what the, some, of, some of the people have planned there, the city of Detroit, because uh, things are pretty bad out there. They've got uh, broken parking meters all over the place. Half of them are, about half of them are Buildings broken. Buildings are crumbling. About <laughs> half of the, uh, the lights, the street lights are completely burnt out or shot out or busted in some way. Let's go to the phone calls from you first, though. Jim is listening in Lynchburg, Virginia. Jim, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Guys, I cannot wait to hear your next segment on how to fix Detroit. <laughs> uh, if you've ever seen pictures of Gaza, I was there recently in Detroit. Oh, my God. The parking meters are not what you're worried about. <laughs> That's not what I was calling. About. I was calling to respond to the last caller, um, Gabriel. Uh, yes. It was like George Bush is evil, George Bush is Satan. Okay, you know, that may well be. I guess if the mainstream media repeats it enough, then you can walk around for the rest of your life saying that that very nice. Is the mainstream media saying those things bad. about George Bush? No, only during the last uh, 7.9 years of his administration. I mean, Bush lied, people died. Bush lied, people died. This guy, I guess he's from Boston or wherever. It's crazy. Okay, it it was a I guess I don't watch that much mainstream media. I never got that impression during the Bush administration that, you know, that the mainstream media was more harsh to him than they were towards, you know, Clinton or, uh, or Barack Obama. Has that been your anybody interpretation? Else, anybody else in the studio agree with that? I, I get the impression um, that – so here's here's what my suggestion is. I think that the, the media is a larger percentage Democrats than it is Republicans, but they try their very yeah, best to, to, pretend fair, to pretend to be fair. Well, yeah, 92 to 8. I mean, it's not even close. I mean, that, that, that I don't know. statement – I mean, 92%? I'll yeah, tell you, Jim. 92% to 8. What I noticed watching TV uh, during the Bush years was that there was a lot of uh, comedians and people ready to make fun of George Bush, not really calling him out for being immoral or a warmonger, but willing to laugh at how he would flub a line or uh, how he might fall over or open a locked door. Uh, It was more like making fun of the, um, uh, the president than really calling him out. For immorality. Like on a comedy show like, uh, you know, like, uh, John Stewart or yeah, something like that. Yeah, you would see it on Daily Show or Saturday Night Live or but even they, on news shows. I think they would they would sort of poke fun like, oh, George Bush doesn't know I mean, what he's doing. But to be fair, haven't they done, you know, poke some fun at uh, Barack Obama on Not really in no? the same way. They've I got that 57, so. states, the 57 states thing that they've they've trotted out for years, but there's really not as many sort of, of you know, Bush, Bush had a way of sort of confusing uh, words up sometimes. and I'd, It's true. It and must he did be do that... more like slapstick bumping into doors and stuff. Well, so there was that. My my point wasn't really the, the media. I I find it difficult to believe that that you guys can come to that conclusion. Well, but, I told uh, you I don't watch mainstream was... media, so I you know it just wasn't That's my good. impression. But my point was that what that guy said was factually inane. That it was a war for oil. Hello, they had a seventy billion dollar budget surplus in the Iraqi government after stealing all the money. We didn't get a dime. Okay, we got no oil. We got zero. The the blood for oil, Bush lied. People, it, it, it's not true. We didn't get any oil. Instantly, the French and Chinese came in and got all the contracts. 
Not one barrel of oil flowed from Iraq to the United States. Well, but you would you would agree that people, I mean, did you hear people say before the Iraq war things like, well, at least oil prices will be cheaper or something like that? Oh, yes. Yeah. And that didn't occur either. I mean, right. it didn't. Not, all these things about demonizing Bush, I mean, he, they're not, I, I, other things are. Look, are, Jim, I, I'm with you on the whole, you know, over the, the oil conclusion that you've made. It really seems to me that the war is about enriching the military industrial complex and but, giving contracts to weapons manufacturers. Well, even so, it's still them acting like security for the oil companies. I mean, it's That's not like true. the oil companies didn't get the oil. Good point. They certainly did. The fact is the U.S. military and the United States government don't give a flying flip at a rolling donut about the American people. And that was, you know, made very, very clear. If that's what it was about, if it was a war of conquest for oil, then the American people would truly have benefited in the sense of uh, lower oil prices. But we see that that's not the case. But we can certainly see that multinational oil companies benefited. Yeah, we we, we didn't get any oil. I mean, uh, yes, we have a substantial stake of the global oil industry headquartered in the United States, but, you know, Royal Dutch Shell is a pretty big player. BP is a pretty big player. Yep. As the, uh, all the Italian and French companies, you know, I mean, it, they, a lot of those countries didn't go over there and fight. I think, you know, it was after 9-11. Everybody said there was weapons of mass destruction. Every Democrat, every ally, every enemy, the Russians, the, everybody. So we went over there to whack the guy before he started handing out WMD to terrorists. It, it wasn't about oil. We well, didn't get any oil. I would like to say that there was a, there, there were a glaring group that was not for war in Iraq, and that was the libertarians. Um, Ian, on this show, I was... Prior to the Iraqi War, the Iraqi War is what converted me to being a, a, a peace activist because I was for the invasion. I'm like, we can't have Saddam Hussein having weapons of mass destruction. But Ian consistently over and over said, nope, nope, nope. They're telling you lies. I can't believe you believe them. And then at some point or another, sure enough, they were telling us lives. I can't believe I believe them. <laughs> What lies were they telling us? The, the, the smoking, of of the smoking gun that would come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Right, the weapons of mass destruction. That's a lot of fearful language. Cake. Yeah, and uh, I have a pertinent... So the- yeah, I have a pertinent quote okay. caller from uh, Smedley Butler, one of the most decorated generals in history. He says, I helped make Honduras right for the American fruit companies in 1903, and in China in 1927, I helped to see to it that Standard Oil went on its way unmolested. So it seems like this is nothing new, that yeah. uh, the military works for the benefit of private companies, and uh, that's how it is. Right, the cover story is that they're going to save you from the madman, but... Yeah, not so much. Oh, wait, didn't they help that madman get installed there in the first place? Ah, Yeah, they did, as a matter of fact. The U.S. government did help him uh, get installed in Iraq and helped uh, give him weapons and things like that. So, kind of funny No question that the military has intervened in Central America on behalf of American corporate interests. And and there's no question that there were weapons of mass destruction there and that 2,500 of them were found last week when ISIS overran the compound they were in. Nevertheless, where they got most of the weapons of mass destruction was from the same people telling it was from us. That's why we knew he had them. Yeah, yeah, but the weapons of mass destruction you're talking about are usually these are biological weapons, uh, you know, chemical weapons, and that wasn't what was sold right. to the American people. They they used WMD as shorthand for yellow cake because yellow cake was what Colin Powell went to the UN with, and that's what you know. And, and Colin Powell was their, um, you know, was he was their bullet catcher because when Colin Powell mm-hmm. went up and said to the UN, they've got this, they've got that. I believed him because Colin Powell was an unimpeachable individual. Then he comes back later and says, I was lied to. Hey, Jim, thanks for the call, man. I do appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to a different Jim. This is James in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, James. Hi, it's James Freeman. Hi there, James. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, Derek, uh, I wanted to respond to this uh, theme, this anger meme that Free Talk Live has about me. I never got a chance to discuss with you. I guess I've never seen it. What's it look like? This anger meme. Okay. You spoke of it last Monday. I guess I don't remember. On this show. Yeah. You don't remember referring to me as an angry man. Oh. Not to mention the the post on Free Talk Live's web page that you all seem to be so ignorant of, but it's named after your show. But because it's 
try to put yourself in this so-called who is most certainly a heel's sh- uh, shoes because a remarkable host of yours has what is an immoral and historically perverted assertion that the embargo of Japan provoked the genocidal evil to impact uh, the genocidal evil empire of uh, Japan to attack the United States in 1941. Hmm. And then I had to endure okay. listening to his... Stand by, James. We'll uh, bring you back. I think you should pick one thing, though, not rather than like seven things to talk about, uh, or I think you're up to four at that point. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. You can take control. If you want to talk to James, get on the line. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, Look for the green box at your favorite store. Lots of things change in life. Here's one thing that has it. For over 20 years, Lumber Liquidators has been the home of unbelievable flooring deals. And right now, those deals are even better. Take your pick of gorgeous pre-finished hardwoods like cherry, oak, and hickory. Or an incredible 149 a square foot. Plus, loads of major hardwood flooring brands at a crazy 40% off. Even get great deals on laminate, bamboo, and vinyl floors. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 12-month financing available. But Hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 11th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.98 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,310 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $588. Antiwar.com reports, the Ukrainian military has angrily spurned a call from eastern Ukrainian rebel leaders for a humanitarian ceasefire, aiming to allow civilians trapped in the seized city of Donetsk to escape. The proposal was pushed overnight by Alexander Zekarchenko, the premier of the secessionist Donetsk People's Republic, saying it was necessary to avert a growing humanitarian crisis in the city, the largest of the rebel-held cities. A Ukrainian military spokesman insisted no offer for a ceasefire would even be considered without a unilateral unconditional surrender by the rebels. The Ukrainian military has Donetsk surrounded and is shelling areas across the city. Large numbers of civilians have fled but many more remain trapped in the ongoing siege. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. 
Reuters reports Tayyip Erdogan is set to be Turkey's next president after local media credited the veteran prime minister with more than half of the vote, with nearly all of the ballots counted. After an election on Sunday that his opponents say may create an increasingly authoritarian state, broadcasters said Erdogan had 52.3% of the vote. Such a result would rule out a runoff and seal Erdogan's place in history as Turkey's first directly elected head of state, a role expected to enhance his power. Turkey has emerged as a regional economic force under Erdogan, who, as prime minister for more than a decade, has ridden a wave of religiously conservative support to transform the secular republic founded by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in 1923. But his critics warn that a President Erdogan, with his roots in political Islam and intolerance of dissent, would lead the NATO member and European Union candidate further away from Atatürk's secular ideals. Turkey's electoral authorities are not officially due to announce their results until today, with final figures due later this week. Opinion polls had put Erdogan far ahead of the two rivals competing for a five-year term as president. Parliament has in the past chosen the head of state, but this was changed under a law pushed through by Erdogan's government. He has set his sights on serving two presidential terms, which would keep him in power past 2023, the 100th anniversary of the secular republic. For a leader who refers frequently to Ottoman history in his speeches, the date has special significance. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Antiwar.com reports, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu urged patience in the ongoing war in the Gaza Strip, insisting that the war will continue until it achieves its long-term goal in the Strip. Defense Minister Moshe Yalan echoed the comments, insisting Hamas would never wear us out and that the Israeli military was comfortable with a long war against Hamas. The comments came before Israel agreed to return to peace talks in Cairo, but stand in stark contrast to comments from other countries cabinet ministers who overwhelmingly were more hawkish and are pushing for a full military conquest of the Strip and the full destruction of Hamas. An actual peace deal will be extremely unpopular among Israel's ruling coalition on any terms and Netanyahu's current policy seems to be keeping the conflict going at a level that keeps his cabinet happy without escalating to such an extent that it alienates the U.S. and other Western nations counseling caution. This makes the ceasefire and peace negotiations negotiations that go along with them extremely difficult as Israel has so far refused to concede a single point on ending the blockade of the Strip, meaning the talks keep stalling without resolution. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's being called the must-have tech gadget of the year. The Samsung Apex, which hits shelves today, streams video into your left eye, internet into your right eye, and sucks your dick all at the same time. Samsung spokesman Neil Werner is projecting the biggest sales in his company's history. Are you kidding me? This thing does everything, plus it sucks your dick, all right? And I know what you're thinking, and yes, ladies, there is a version for you that eats you out. Hanging up Apple, we beat you the punch on this one. Samsung's got you by the balls. In spite of the almost $1,000 price tag, customers are raving about the device. For my career, I do need uh, the internet and TV and my dick sucked all the time. I already have a TV and a girlfriend and a laptop, but to have all those in one device would be really nice. Even a run of bad press about unsafe working conditions in the Apex factory in India have not dampened sales projections. Yeah, 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 factory, factory, switch up, switch up, blah, blah. How about you just plug your eyeball straight into the internet and get your dick sucked? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. You can also call in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. James in Arizona, he is, uh, he's angry. And we're going to bring him back on the line here to explain just why. What has... How has he been wronged this time? The toll-free number, 
Four fifty free. That's going to get you in trouble just saying that. You know that, right? <laughs> so we jump back into him. Uh, James, you're back on Free Talk Live. Now, let's reverse real quick because you hit like three, at least three or four topics in the in the first minute of your call at the very end of the last hour. And the first thing that you had brought up was confusing to Derek J. You referred to a meme that was about you. I tried to explain during the, the break that you'd called about this last week. And apparently it was something that uh, that you know, Mark had posted to the Free Talk Live profile. You got to tell me what it is. And I explained that, look, you know, the Free Talk Live Facebook page is administered by five or seven different people. Not everybody knows what everybody else posts. Not everybody reads all of the posts. So Derek J was in the dark, as I'm sure many of our listeners are in the dark, about whatever this offensive meme was. Can you describe for our listeners and for Derek and Mark, apparently, uh, what it was that, uh, that, you, that had been posted. Excuse me for my bushes, and I lost my train of not-so-deep thoughts. That's pretty good. Mm. Uh, your, your response to the end of the last hour's call was longer than I even spoke. <laughs> May I point that out? <laughs> Literally, that's the truth. And for, uh, to use your words, Derek J., and as to why your two co-hosts rubbed me such the wrong way, is I literally was trying to discuss the re- remarkable things, multiple things one last had to hear said about me by one host named Mark, who uh, on Tuesday I had to listen to him and your fellow host declare I'm not a libertarian because I, I defend the U.S. Navy not letting shady business, businessmen deliver uh, a total war killing machine it's life and death blood. Mm-hmm. You're oil, talking about the Japanese, is, uh, the embargo prior to, on Japanese right, Prior oil. to them attacking us in a Honolulu. That's right, Ian. And if, if I'm not a libertarian for not wanting businessmen to deal drugs to, drug, uh, to gangsters and killers, then you aren't either. You're something that I don't even know what to be called. you should be called. But the point James, is— James, do you know the expression is, about is, embargoes? No, please don't interrupt Please don't interrupt because there's one more point I want to make, and I do want to talk to you, Derek J. But the next day I called in to take Mark up on this because remember this was after I called Free Talk Live that they brought these things up. Mark um, and Ian um, called me chronic and obsessive caller and said he sure does like to talk about that Japan thing, but it wasn't me that brought it up on Tuesday. Mark did, and I never got to respond. And then they make me fun of me when I try to respond to them the next day. That's the kind of people you are sitting in between. Okay, right so now, Derek, Derek had a question Jay. for you about embargoes. Yeah, uh-huh. have you heard worry, the expression? Don't worry about what I just said, Ian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry what you treated. Right, we're going to have a conversation. We just need to take turns. Yeah, we just right. need to take turns on this. I, I'm listening to you, well, and I heard everything that you said. We'll take turns. Well, I have something to respond to about the beginning of what you said, which is about okay. your opposition to an embargo, or that you are pro-embargo, and that it sounds like Ian and Mark were against it. And I wanted to ask uh-huh. you if you've heard the expression, when goods don't cross borders, soldiers do. Have you heard that? Yeah. At the present time that that's we were true? not dealing with, I'm going to respond to it. At the present time, 1940, when the embargo started— Japan had. That's not an answer to the question. Uh, I don't know how strong their military was in, in China, but I think it was like a million strong. Well, I'm going to wager they that you're the only the, expert oh. on this incident, but you, in this room right. or in this so conversation. What do you have to say about so that? Let's not, That's why we embargo Japan. So let's talk about something because that we all their know. Soldiers crossed the, the Sea of Japan and went into China and had been there for years and murdered millions of people and raped millions of people, tortured millions of people to death. Okay, these are facts. That's why we were embargoing Japan. And say I'm not a libertarian because I'm against uh, open markets for gangsters and murderous regimes. Why does it upset you so much what Mark and Ian think about you? Because that's why they label me as not being a libertarian. And they made fun of me for bringing up Japan again because they brought it up. Yeah, you're also not a libertarian really because you support about. war in general. I mean, you okay. support uh, the, the, the bombing okay, of Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki. Of sorry, caller. you're disqualified. Speaking of, okay, speaking of Gabriel's call, by the way, Derek J., have you ever wondered how much of a better world the place would be if Kuwait was still occupied by no. one living mass murderer? I never think about Kuwait, ever. 
My sister went you there don't. once, and I was well, concerned for her we safety. That's there. the only time I thought about it. Thanks, James, for the call. I didn't go anywhere. I'd just like to clarify, I've never gone over to another country. He keeps saying we went somewhere. I wouldn't go with James. I wouldn't travel with James, and uh, I certainly wouldn't go over to Bob. Well, he's saying we. He means the United people. States government. Yeah, that's but what I he think means. that it's fair to point out that's that not me. Saddam Hussein was pr- was un- under the impression. It, it appears as though Saddam Hussein was under the impression that it was okay for him to invade Kuwait. Now, I've gone back and watched these news clips where they're talking about this. And I think it was Madeleine, was it? No, Madeleine Albright wasn't involved. It was uh, another, uh, you know, uh, the Saddam, Saddam, Saddam Hussein regime contacted the American embassy and said, hey, is it okay if uh, we, you know, go and settle our dispute with Kuwait? And it's like, we don't have anything to do with that. And then they went in and, you know, invaded mm-hmm. the way they did. And suddenly this coalition comes in and drives them back and you know i mean hussein was on their payroll up until that time and then suddenly they decide to turn on him now if it's a miscommunication then let's solve it like a miscommunication let's not solve it like hey this is he's evil look he's evil i mean the, the, the denial wasn't made as far as the invasion of Kuwait. The United States did not deny that they had given the instructions the way they did. All this war talk is very confusing to me. You know, I got a, a history at a government school, and so I believe I was told a lot of lies about what happened in the past. And so I, I really just have to go on what makes sense to me now. And what makes sense to me is I should stay out of that. I have no clue what's going on overseas. And I'm willing to grant that James is a expert on everything that happened in history, and he knows exactly how things would have gone. But that doesn't give him any justification or any authority to use my funds to support the wars that he well, wants to wage. He has actually on this show come out uh, against sort of uh, you know government armies, but still believes that there would be private armies and that those armies should be employed. And I've been willing to agree with him on multiple occasions that I think that the um, that the J- Japan U.S. conflict was inevitable. The only disagreement I have is the dropping of the bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Over and over, that's been the disagreement. But, you know, he wants to move it to this embargo. And the the only point I made with the embargo is it's not very libertarian to support this embargo. When you tell American businessmen they can't do business with who they want to do business with. Or else... Or else you'll be arrested. You know, you know you're going to come after him. It's that's just Roosevelt going after business, like Roosevelt went after business the whole time Roosevelt was in office. Yeah, I mean, look, the def- the classic definition from the Libertarian Party, which by no means is the arbiter of what is truly, in my opinion, libertarian, is uh, the statement that you sign when you join the party, which I took seriously when I joined it, and I've since resigned from it, but uh, when I did join it, it was uh, some sort of statement like, I don't support or advocate the initiation of force to achieve social or, or political goals. I don't know if it says fraud, but uh, either way, a force or fraud to achieve social or political goals. And if you're using the uh, the strength and the threat of the U.S. government and the military and the police to stop people from doing business, even if it, even if they're doing business with an alleged criminal, as James was suggesting there, uh, that's their business. And it's not my business to use violence or the threat thereof to stop that. Now, I could use boycott. I could use spreading information. I could use the marketplace, uh, you know, letting people know what these businesses are doing and why, you know, why is, why is such and such you know, Texaco doing business with these scumbags or whatever. Uh, we can do that. I'm, I support using market mechanisms to try to change things, but not the, not the threat of the state. Well, and to me, that's what a libertarian is, is somebody who avoids the use of the state. Well, my point in bringing up with James the quote that when goods don't cross borders, soldiers do, was that it's totally predictable when you introduce force into a mm-hmm. situation where people are peacefully trading with one another and you tell them suddenly they can't, there's going to be a conflict. We will continue and you can bring up anything that's on your mind. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. Detroit, they've been having a tough time recently and apparently there's a plan afoot to try to change things. We'll explain here in a moment. 855-450 free. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. And you can call in about anything. We've uh, talked about depression tonight as well. So whatever's on your mind goes here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. 
This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. My name is Angel Rach. I'm a mother of two teenage children, and I fought all the way to the Supreme Court for the right to use the medicine that saved my life. I've been permanently disabled for 10 years with an inoperable brain tumor, wasting syndrome, and several other serious conditions. For four years, I was in a wheelchair in so much pain, I couldn't even hug my kids. The hardest part was looking in their eyes and seeing how much they were suffering because of my medical condition. The medicine that gave me my life back and gave my kids their mom back was cannabis, also known as medical marijuana. With medical marijuana, I can walk, maintain my weight, and I can be a mom. Without it, my doctors believe that I would die. To learn more about medical marijuana, contact Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or on the web at mpp.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on our site. 
They are totally free. Modafinil at modup.net. If you need focus, feeling fatigued, and are trying to get the extra edge when it counts, go to modup, M-O-D-U-P, modup.net. Studies show that one in five students are using modafinil, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are also talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. Now, at modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency so you enjoy significant results. That's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Now, remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide, so it's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. And modup.net, by the way, will give you a heck of a discount if you pay with Bitcoin. It's 33% off by paying with Bitcoin at modup.net. You enter code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with the or, uh, with your order to make the deal even better. So don't forget, code FTL, modup.net. That's world-class service at a great price for Modafinil. Modup.net, again, code FTL. So uh, Detroit, things are bad, man. They've just been bad for years and they're just getting worse. Uh, the government's in shambles, but yet the bureaucracy still rumbles on. Uh, these government bureaucrats may not even be getting the pensions that they thought they were going to be getting, but they sure are hoping so, and there's a lawsuit, I think, in the works about that. You've got a situation where the Detroit police in some areas are shutting down at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. They're shutting down the walk-in hours uh, from their police departments. People are responding to that by arming up and defending themselves against criminals. And There's actually been a drop in violent crime as a result, apparently, of people arming up. So there's some interesting you know, quirks and stories that are coming out of Detroit that you don't see happening in other places because you don't have the same dire economic circumstances. And so there's, it's really instructive to look at it. You've got a total breakdown in a lot of areas of city government. The thing that we traditionally don't think of, we take for granted because, well, governments have always provided street lights. Well, not in Detroit. About half of them are functioning in Detroit. Street lights. Now, of course, when street lights start to go out, crime starts to go up. Uh, remember, I don't know if you remember this one, Mark, but uh, years ago, there was the news about uh, Great Britain or in, you know, in London, you know, they installed all these CCTV cameras everywhere with yep. the idea of keeping an eye on things and helping keep people safe. They even had little speakers that somebody with a microphone could yell at people at if they had like thrown some litter on the ground or something like, Oi! <laughs> Uh, I guess that's an Australian thing. But no, anyway. Oi is uh, definitely is an English Is Oi over thing. in English? Okay, I didn't hear England. Anyway, so uh, you got all these cameras everywhere, but after a couple years of this, and they did some studies, they found that, well, actually, in point of fact, having cameras up doesn't really do much to stop crime, but having street lights sure does. So that's not good. <laughs> Fix the damn street lights. They can't. They owe money on their power bill. Detroit is back in power bill payments. I mean, there's just, it's not looking good. So they've got to come up with something. Well, luckily, luckily, someone has an idea. This from Reason.com's Hit and Run blog. In 1999, William Ford Jr., whose family owns the Detroit Lions, said that a new stadium would showcase the city's turnaround. <laughs> in 1997, Michigan Governor John Engler stated the stadium would symbolize the city's renewal. Over a decade later, the city is now bankrupt. But rather than learning from the past and despite an overwhelming consensus amongst economists that sports stadium subsidies have no positive effect on an economy, the new Detroit Red Wings Arena, Red Wings Arena proposal is being sold as a way to boost the economy and bring Detroit out of bankruptcy. Oh no! It's pitched as a win-win with no jeopardy to taxpayers. And that's at best a half-truth. Here's more on the story from uh, Reason.com and an expanded piece. Anyone who wants to understand how Detroit got into its current mesh should look at the new Red Wings arena that Michigan's powers that be recently decided to foist on it. The arena is being sold as this win-win, and in reality, it's a body slam for Motown and a hat trick for Red Wings owner billionaire Mike Illich. The arena is the linchpin of a $650 million entertainment complex that Michigan's business and political elites, who include everyone from Governor Rick Snyder down to Detroit's Mayor Dave Bing, have cooked up to revive Detroit after bankruptcy. Now, this article came from last year, but the the new piece, that the shorty that I just read to you, is fresh. That's from today. So the article with the detail is, is from 2013. 
Um, anyway, uh, going on here. The plan involves pulling businesses into the vacant areas between Detroit's downtown and midtown section, creating an unbroken development corridor. If all goes well, the fairy tale. You gotta have goes, these buzzwords. You know, we need to. God, we could, we couldn't just uh, bring in more business. We need a development corridor. The Red Wings will get a new, and you're gonna need a task force to make yes, sure that that's the right. development <laughs> ribbon task force. Yeah. Uh, the Red Wings will get a new facility, benefiting a team of their stature. The state will get to hang on to its beloved team, and Illich, the owner, will get well-deserved returns for his generous investments and Detroit will get more private investment. Who could lose? What makes the uh, this a particularly good deal for the city, according to the chief operating officer of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, a yeah, government is a agency <laughs> uh, that is supposed to boost business activity, is that Illich's Olympia development will foot the major portion of the bill. The rest will be squeezed out of existing pots of government money financed mostly by local business taxes. The assurance that the arena... Aren't the local businesses taxpayers? Yes. So the claim that uh, this will this is a win-win for taxpayers? The assurance that the arena won't pose any Bullcrap. additional burden on average taxpayers has won the support even of the local media skeptics who rightly question the arena's We love free money that falls from the sky. I love I love how people can fall for this crap. Money doesn't come from nowhere. Question the arena's job and tax revenue projections. There will be no jeopardy to taxpayers, notes Frank Beckman, a conservative radio show host, saying that none of the cash will come out of the operating dollars for broke Detroit and Wayne County, said the Detroit Free Press's liberal editorial page editor, Stephen Henderson. So the conservatives and the liberals apparently are won over in the Detroit media about this. They're on board. But according to reason, at best, that's a half-truth. The arena itself... The first, and as of now the only, certain phase of the entertainment complex is expected to cost $440 million in upfront capital expenditures. Hey, you remember that story about that, what was it, uh, uh, I don't remember what kind of arena it was, but there was some arena in Detroit that it sold was, for like three hundred. It sold for like a few hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars or something. And like it was that. originally built for seventeen million dollars or seventy million or something ridiculous like that. And that but sold within the last decade. It sold Detroit. within the last decade. Yes. Yeah. Things are not good there for the arena business, in my opinion. Well, I, I mean, this is what they feel like is that they have to compete. And I think they do to some extent. They have to compete with a new arena. But this is a new arena. And so people will come and it'll be a wonderful success for the economy the People of are raising goats in their backyard in Detroit. <laughs> this is a post-apocalyptic Detroit. People aren't going to go to your Red Wing Stadium. <laughs> This rings to me of the, the bread and circuses that I yes. heard in the fall of the Roman Empire. The entire amount here, by the way, the arena, again, $440 million. The entire amount will be financed by 30-year tax-exempt revenue bonds floated by the Michigan Strategic Fund that is statutorily authorized to extend the state's credit line to worthy private projects. Who will service these bonds? We'll tell you more about that and how the taxpayers factor in, because it's a little complicated. 855 450 free. You think this is going to raise Detroit out of the uh, economic problems they're having? Jessica Armand here, creator of My Magic Mud, the all natural teeth whitener and strengthening remedy that's getting rave reviews from GCN listeners. Here's what Austin dentist Dr. Griffin Cole has to say about it. I really love this Magic Mud product. Because charcoal is so absorbent, it's very effective at taking off all the sticky plaque and debris that gets stuck on our teeth every day. I highly recommend My Magic Mud. Visit MyMagicMud.com to hear the full interview with Dr. Cole. Get your jar today. That's MyMagicMud.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's 
That's the problem, officer! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. And that is the Pro XPN toll free line. We here on Free Talk Live like alternative currencies like gold and silver. You want to hook up with some gold and silver, go to gold.freetalklive.com. And if you want to get hooked up with some Bitcoin, go to expresscoin.com. Yeah, if you go to expresscoin.com, you'll have the opportunity to buy all kinds of different uh, cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin. Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin. You can do it in the United States or in Canada. Uh, they pride themselves on their customer service. It's inexpensive, fast, easy, completely legal. And you can do it from within without driving very far at all. So if you want to get your Bitcoins in one business day, you can go make a deposit at a local credit union. They have to have shared branching in order to be able to do it. But, uh, you know, you go there, you make your deposit, and within a business day, you'll have your Bitcoins. You just start off by going to ExpressCoin.com. You can also do it the old-fashioned way with money order check or wire transfer. But you can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL, get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin, or excuse me, any cryptocurrency, mm. for no fee at all. $40 will buy you a lot of Dogecoin. It will buy you a lot of Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> However, it will still be worth only less than $40. Right. <laughs> so expresscoin.com. All right. So here's the detail on Detroit's plan to bring back the economy with a stadium. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have more sports. Um, if people will attend this thing, as you pointed out, Mark, the, lots of people in Detroit they're pretty poor and you know, having a tough time. I don't know how many of those people are going to be able to shell out 
60 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever the average cost of a ticket and a Season hot dog tickets. And, a, and a beer is uh, I mean 60 bucks is like one trip to the stadium for one person um, so anyway this the plan here is to build a new Red Wings uh, stadium at 440 million dollars they claim this is going to bring back the economy and it's not going to cost taxpayers they claim in fact a local conservative talk show according to reason.com local conservative host is saying there's no jeopardy to taxpayers the Detroit Free Press's liberal editorial page editor says none of the cash will come out of the operating dollars for Detroit or Wayne County. This is awful because people are at their most susceptible when they are down and out, mm -hmm. right? And uh, most people wouldn't believe a politician who promised them something for nothing unless they're in a desperate situation. And that's always the case with projects like these. So here's the story. How is it that this is – how is it that it's – uh, partially true that you know there's no jeopardy to taxpayers or the cash won't come out of the operating budget. Well, so this $440 million will be financed by 30-year tax-exempt revenue bonds floated by the Michigan Strategic Fund that is authorized to extend the state's credit line to worthy private, uh, private projects. And this is a private project. Uh, who will service these bonds? The official story is that it is the Detroit Development Authority, a government agency that supports downtown businesses, they claim. And Illich, that's the owner of the Red Wings, himself okay. will share the responsibility. Both sides, however, will stick it to the taxpayers and the residents. The DDA, the Detroit Development Authority, will contribute somewhere between 15 to $17 million annually toward the bond payments. Of this, 13 to 15 million will come from property taxes originally imposed on area businesses to finance a school construction project. The school debt has been retired, but the DDA has continued to collect the uh. one mill tax. The money is supposed to go to the Michigan School Aid Fund, but the Republican-controlled state legislature and Republican Governor Snyder passed a law in December authorizing the DDA to divert this money to the arena. Oh. So they had this tax set up for the schools. It kind of ran, ran its course, but they kept the tax on, and they said it was going to keep going to the schools. And then Remember they passed we... a special law to divert the money from the schools to this arena. Remember Oops. when people were, they were talking about the cell phones were still getting a tax from the Spanish-American War? Yes. <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing stays alive like a government program. Yeah. In other words, money originally meant for poor inner-city children will go to the pocket of a billionaire and that too when the city is in bankruptcy and creditors are receiving massive haircuts if the tax won't be eliminated and detroit is the ninth highest tax city in the country or given to schools surely fighting crime or installing street lighting uh, or picking up trash would be better uses for it considering that detroit's not doing those things very well right now the DDA has always been something of a slush fund for the business cronies of local politicos, but diverting hundreds of millions of dollars into a project that will ultimately benefit mainly one business takes crony capitalism to a whole new level. Mr. Hilfinger notes that his agency canvassed local businesses before proceeding and found only excitement, not opposition, because of a revived downtown would boost everyone's bottom line. It's not clear if it included in the sample, uh, or if included in the sample, were folks like the late Detroit Pistons owner Bill Davidson, who constructed a basketball arena in Auburn Hills, a Detroit suburb totally out of his own pocket. Wow. Illich's side of the bargain is even more problematic. The official line is that his company will contribute. $11.5 million annually, or about $35 million over 30 years. Wait, that can't be right. How can that be? If it's $11 million annually, how would that be $35 million over 30 years? The cost of servicing the bond. This is a pittance compared to taxpayers' contribution, and even if this consists simply of lease payments, something that he would have to pay no matter where he parked the Red Wings, it involves nothing extra to defray the construction cost of the new facility. Even worse, Illich, who's notorious for driving a hard bargain, insisted on leasing instead of owning the facility because Crane's Detroit Business reports that would save him $1 million annually in property taxes taxes. Mm. Far from rebuilding the city's tax base, the arena will deplete it even further. And since this lease will be renewable every few years, should the Red Wings division ranking drop and ticket sales plummet, Illich could walk away from the arena without liability. Taxpayers, however, will have no such luck. 
Hilfiger points out that Illich has also pet pledged $200 million toward the ancillary development, and that's part of the entertainment complex idea, some unspecified amount of currently worthless downtown property that he's been sitting on. When everything is added up, Illich's contribution will add up to 56% and taxpayer contribution 44%. But there are at least two problems with this claim. One, the ancillary development won't begin for several years. Should the downtown show few signs of revival after the arena goes up, mm. it's hard to see how authorities could insist that Illich and other investors continue to sink money into it, even though Hilfiger says they'll be contractually required to do so. The bigger problem is that whenever Illich, the owner of the Red Wings, contributes parking structures, retail, office space, he'll own and exclusively profit from. It's a verbal gimmick to dub this a contribution as if it were an act of charity. The deal, in other words, forces taxpayers to assume all of the risk, even as Illich gains monopoly rights to virtually all <laughs> of the revenues. He's not going to be having an ownership interest, but yet he gets to control all the, the dealings and the property. It's practically criminal. Detroit is in bankruptcy because special interests, whether big labor or big business, have diverted its resources to service there, not the general resident needs. The new Red Wings arena suggests that bankruptcy has changed nothing. Wow, this sounds like fascism to me, and not the <laughs> yeah. not the jackboot kind of uh, Nazi stomping in the streets type of fascism mm -hmm. that I think most people are familiar with, but like Benito Mussolini, who knew a thing or two about fascism, uh, described it. It's the merger of state and corporate powers, and what could be more a merger of state and corporate powers than this baloney arena that uh, one man seems to benefit from yep. all the revenue, but then, oh, I don't have any accountability or responsibility for owning this thing you that makes me all kinds of money. three years or something like that. Oh, and the people who pay for it, yeah, that's all you little people. And all we have to do is look at New London, Connecticut, for another example of government. You know, this one of these economic development corporations. They have these things everywhere. Here in Keene, yep. there's there's the Monadnock Economic Development Corporation. It's basically a front corporation for the uh, for the state. It can do things that the state can't basically legally do. Yes. Right. It's uh, it's because it's not the state, even though it's created essentially by them. Uh, but, you know, you've got things like this everywhere. Of course, New London, they created this huge facility for Pfizer and allegedly other companies to move into. They destroyed uh, family homes that were there for generations mm -hmm. in the Fort Trumbull neighborhood. And ultimately, Pfizer backed out of the property after a couple of years. Whoops. And the, whole, the thing's a ghost town now. There's nobody there. Sorry. It's yeah, been completely the when devastated. Have, when you have government do business, because they can't. There's more coming up here in moments. Uh, in fact, Osama bin Laden apparently is alive and recently crossed the U.S. border or That's something right. like that. We'll find out more about it here. Derek J. has the story coming up next on Free Talk Live. Lots of things change in life. Here's one thing that has it. For over 20 years, Lumber Liquidators has been the home of unbelievable flooring deals. And right now, those deals are even better. Take your pick of gorgeous pre-finished hardwoods like cherry, oak, and hickory, or an incredible 149 a square foot, plus loads of major hardwood flooring brands at a crazy 40% off. Even get great deals on laminate, bamboo, and vinyl floors. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 12-month financing available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Hi, Chuck. Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. It's the heart of summer across America. Thoughts turn to childhood and long days of fun. Everybody would love to feel like a kid again. An HB extract can be a vital tool in your battle to stay vibrant and young as it supports healthy blood pressure and circulation while balancing cholesterol. GCN and longtime sponsor HB extract want to help keep your heart healthy with the 30 bottles, 30 days summer giveaway. Enter to win by visiting GCNlive.com between now and August 29th and click on the contact Contest banner in the top left corner of the page. HB Extract has helped tens of thousands of people worldwide feel good again. And they've done it with HB Extract's exclusive formula of wild crafted and organic herbs. Here's to you enjoying many more long, warm, and fun-filled summers free of pain and sickness. Visit GCNlive.com and enter to win in the 30 bottle 30 days summer giveaway with HB Extract. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Sign up now at GCNlive.com. 
I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you going to display? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable you. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. Now, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait on the count. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You take control toll free. 855-450 free. Join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. We'll put up the news about Detroit on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. You can check those out and go to news.freetalklive.com to find links to those. And also don't forget that Free Talk Live is brought to you by Keenvention. It's coming up in just under three months. It's happening October 31st through November 2nd. Great opportunity to come up, check out New Hampshire, experience the, the Keene area, and meet lots of great activists from all over New Hampshire, not just the Keene area folks. We pull people in from all over for Keenevention, and there'll be lots of different uh, subjects being discussed. Some panels will be back from last year, albeit with different hosts in some cases, sometimes the same host. Stephanie Murphy, our very own uh, Sunday night co-host, she will be hosting the Bitcoin panel again this year. I don't know who she's choosing for it. Mark, you'll be doing the news media panel for the first time you were on the panel last year uh, dave ridley was the host you'll be hosting the panel this year so we're uh, we've begun to announce those panels i still have more work to do on that though putting all that together so go to keenvention.info to get the latest you can get signed up for 60 bucks and keenvention accepts bitcoin in fact it was because keenvention took bitcoin last year in our first year that keenvention was profitable in the first year had we not taken bitcoin Keenvention would have probably have lost a few hundred dollars, but because Bitcoin was accepted, the Bitcoin went up in value from the point at the point in time at which people paid for the tickets in their in Bitcoin, and when the event actually happened. So we actually made a slight uh, profit on the event as well. Hooray! As Bitcoin. For, so for the first year of a convention, you don't normally expect to to you know see it be profitable the first year out, but it, it did because of Bitcoin. So go to Keenvention.info. The links to buy with Bitcoin are there, or you can just use your credit card through Eventbrite and get signed up we'll look forward to seeing you and it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm looking forward to it where it is derek j you might be involved in throwing a costume party but i don't know how that's coming along yeah so it's it, it's in the works uh still working on you know all the things that are involved with throwing yeah, a big a lot party that, we've got a, a team working on it there's but, a lot that yeah. has to come together but i'm excited about it and i think it's going to be an even better keenvention this year than uh, than it was last year and it was great last year so go to keenvention.info derek j you were really excited tonight to talk about this osama bin laden <laughs> Yes. He's back. He's now in the United States, or at least someone that looks a whole lot like him. Yeah, he made it. 
Well, what a, happened? Uh, a flame throwing American conservative activist uh, raised eyebrows in the U.S. on Monday by releasing a video of himself crossing the Rio Grande River from Mexico into Texas dressed as the late Al Qaeda terror mastermind Osama bin Laden. This from dailymail.co.uk. Uh, this is the filmmaker. James O'Keefe, uh, who was known for his guerrilla documentaries targeting liberals, and he says the border fence is a joke. Well, he's right about that, but for the wrong reasons. <laughs> guerrilla documentarian James O'Keefe's footage comes at a time when Americans are engaged in a national debate about border security. Tens of thousands of unaccompanied minors from Central America have entered the U.S. illegally in recent months, drawn by a confusing White House policy that appears to offer amnesty for those who make it here safely. Now, by the way, I'd like to point out, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about these uh, minors coming in and the suggestion that huge amounts of money have been spent on coyotes. Coyotes are sp money on spent on coyotes to get you across the border without getting caught. The miners, these young people that are coming across, I don't say, miners sounds like people are yeah. dig. Right, when I first heard you say it, I'm like, what? Minors, um, the young people coming across the border that they are trying to, to come here, are not trying to not get caught. They are trying to get caught. Mm, right. Because their expectation is, is that they are going to be able to stay with papers. So there's... There's a lot of, but it's sort confusing. of miscommunication going on. Mm. There's, they're flat out freaking lies being told that coyotes are being paid thousands of dollars by families who apparently aren't poor enough um, to uh, send their kids across the border. Nope. These are young people coming across the border, in many cases, of their own volition because they want to live what they consider to be a better place. Well, it's not clear to me what this border even looks like. Uh, according to the article, in Monday's video release, O'Keefe focuses on the implications for national security. He illegally crosses into Mexico twice and returns, first in street clothes and then again in army fatigues wearing an Osama bin Laden Halloween mask. So hold up. He crossed into Mexico first. Yep. Illegally. On foot. And then crossed back. Yes. So did they arrest him? Uh, no. No, he has not been arrested. I don't know. Not uh, Who's since releasing arrest him? The this. Mexicans? Yeah, I mean, I don't know who who you expect to arrest him, but uh, he came out with this video. The, the official Mexicans don't care about Americans illegally crossing into their border, I can okay. assure you. No, generally is it not. not. Just illegal, leave your just money. To, just to clarify, <laughs> is it not illegal to cross at a point at which there is no checkpoint? As, as an American, as somebody who's from the United States, if you go in, how would about that, one but it's know? Interesting. How would you even know? Well, you'd, be, you'd release a video. But I think that this is very <laughs> well, interesting, get though. Arrested, yeah. you're, you're right, Ian, because an American is allowed to be in the United States. So crossing a border into the United States mm -hmm. may not be illegal. Oh. I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, That's but so. apparently you're supposed to go through the border checkpoint, though, right? right. And get all your rights it, violated, maybe get molested. That's certainly what they want you to do. Yeah, get the things searched. Well, they the put up plenty of them for you to encounter, but you know, if you make a point of it, intentionally avoiding a U.S. border checkpoint upon returning to the United States, is that some sort of a violation? I don't know the answer, but I can see what Mr. O'Keefe is trying to point out here is is that uh, we aren't spending enough money on border security because the terrorists are winning. Um, I have a better suggestion, and it costs far less. Get every single U.S. Army uh, trooper, Marine, Airman, whatever, out of every single foreign country. Put them on the first thing that produces smoke back to the United States, and then— then the then the terrorists won't want to come here. They won't want to attack the United States because hmm. there'll no, be no reason to. Because their puppet dictator won't be propped up any longer by the United States' military. I agree with that. The official White House website includes a claim that, quote, Today, border security is stronger than it has ever <laughs> been. But O'Keefe told Mail Online that his stunt proves the federal government's policy is lax. Well, he believes it needs a dramatic overhaul. Well, I agree. <laughs> I think you should pay for it. But Any fence you want, Mr. O'Keefe, get together with your conservative fence-building friends and build a, build a fence. Yeah, sure. I support it. I wouldn't uh, stop him from building a fence, but— uh, If it was on his private property. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> Which but, is not the Rio Grande, probably not his private property. No, probably not. See, what he wants is he wants the iris, he wants the the benefits of a uh, hegemic empire spanning the globe and the benefits that it brings to the United States, and he doesn't want the the blowback that comes along with it. You don't get it both ways. I don't want your fence. I think your fence will not be used to keep people out as much as it will be used in the future to keep people in. I mm. think you should be more worried about what immigration laws are to China for your kids than what they are to the United States. Mm. Because this government has spent itself into insolvency and has a very limited time, and the people in this country are going to be facing the ramifications of their bad voting habits, mm. voting for the lesser of two evils for generations into the past. The chickens are going to come home to roost, and the chickens, uh, they're pretty upset. You know, what's with these small government conservatives? I mean, these allegedly small government conservatives. They like to tout how they're into freedom and, you know, less government. But yet here they are complaining for more government, shouting from the rooftops. Isn't that weird? I mean, here's one interesting quote from the filmmaker. I don't know what the Mexican law is, and frankly, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'd fl- right. All I know is nobody was there protecting our national security. Ah. This man doesn't, he's an illegal. He doesn't care about their laws in Mexico. He deserves to be packed up into a jail and shipped yeah. back in a coffin. I don't care what happens <laughs> to him. He broke the law. Yeah. He's an illegal. I think that's pretty interesting. That's a very interesting statement because usually you'll get these guys calling in and and by the way, it's not just conservatives who want to uh, restrict immigration. There's plenty of liberals who want to restrict immigration, too. But you get these immigration restriction people calling in, and they're complaining, well, why don't they use the system? We, we, I support immigration, but I want you to do it legally. Well, here's this guy saying, I don't give a flip about what the laws are in Mexico. Why should, you know, if he doesn't care what the laws are, why should they care what the laws are here? Yeah. Why should anyone care what the laws are here anyway? It's pretty revealing. Well, at least Obama has said that the fence is now basically complete, so we can take oh, his word really? for it. Yep. Uh, There's a fence? Well, Oh, yeah, sure. It's four strands of barbed wire, and uh, that's going to keep the borders totally So this totally is different secure. from the fence that the teenage girls were scaling up in the video? There's all yes. kinds of fences. Yeah, this is different. I see. There's this like, was barbed wire. There's uh, like 1,500 or 2,000 miles of border between <laughs> the United States and Mexico. The idea that you're going to run one single fence from yeah. one place, to it's ludicrous. All right, so we're out of time for tonight. But you can join Derek J on his website at derekj.me. And you can join Free Talk Live anytime over at freetalklive.com. And check Derek J tonight on The Freedom Fiends on lrn.fm later on. See ya. There is no such thing as attention span, according to Jerry Seinfeld, who figures that people have an infinite attention span if you are entertaining them. Hey, he's kept us from channel surfing for several decades, and now he's making more millions as a Las Vegas headliner. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're looking for work. So choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Avoid redundancies such as added bonus, advance warning, end result, prior history, or personal belongings. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308.
The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, August 11th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.98 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,310 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $588. Antiwar.com reports, the Ukrainian military has angrily spurned a call from eastern Ukrainian rebel leaders for a humanitarian ceasefire aiming to allow civilians trapped in the seized city of Donetsk to escape. The proposal was pushed overnight by Alexander Zekarchenko, the premier of the secessionist Donetsk People's Republic, saying it was necessary to avert a growing humanitarian crisis in the city, the largest of the rebel-held cities. A Ukrainian military spokesman insisted no offer for a ceasefire would even be considered without a unilateral unconditional surrender by the rebels. The Ukrainian military has Donetsk surrounded and is shelling areas across the city. Large numbers of civilians have fled Led, but many more remain trapped in the ongoing siege. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports Tayyip Erdogan is set to be Turkey's next president after local media credited the veteran prime minister with more than half of the vote, with nearly all of the ballots counted. After an election on Sunday that his opponents say may create an increasingly authoritarian state, broadcaster said Erdogan had 52.3% of the vote. Such a result would rule out a runoff and seal Erdogan's place in history as Turkey's first directly elected head of state, a role expected to enhance his power. Turkey has emerged as a regional economic force under Erdogan, who, as prime minister for more than a decade, has ridden a wave of religiously conservative support to transform the secular republic founded by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in 1923. But his critics warn that a President Erdogan, with his roots in political Islam and intolerance of dissent, would lead the NATO member and European Union candidate further away from Atatürk's secular ideals. Turkey's electoral authorities are not officially due to announce their results until today, with final figures due later this week. Opinion polls had put Erdogan far ahead of the two rivals competing for a five-year term as president. Parliament has in the past chosen the head of state, but this was changed under a law pushed through by Erdogan's government. He has set his sights on serving two presidential terms, which would keep him in power past 2023, the 100th anniversary of the secular republic. For a leader who refers frequently to Ottoman history in his speeches, the date has special significance. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and 